The year is 2023, and we are playing Minecraft here on this here online internet website. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. What's up? What is up? Indeed. Uh, Minecraft. Minecraft. Minecraft is up. Minecraft is up. Hi, Blade. Oh, and Adam. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a few atoms being blasted over there. Yep. True. So we have a new forest. Um, apparently, a forest was planted because of my previous bitching, which <laughs> I appreciate. It's true. Yeah. You and, complained and course, about the lack of spruce. Yeah. So and now we are going to have to chop it down to build that building. Well, I mean, that's fine. I, mean, I, just, I was waiting for it to grow so that way you could get your spruce wood for drawers. Yeah. Um, on, on that note, um, I already solved that problem. Well, it doesn't matter. We now have spruce. We now have spruce. I, I, like, the, I like the sawing element. Yeah. And these trees don't have chickens in them, which is nice. <laughs> you know what? When I was bitching about not having spruce, I looked over there and I'm like, I should cut those down, but but I don't want to displace the chickens. <laughs> yeah, they have made their homes in there. They have. Um, well, yeah, speaking like of there drawers. Are four? Yeah. Or five? Uh, no, there's like six chickens in these trees. Yep, yep. I know. I know they keep. The number keeps increasing. And you're not doing any of that, right? I am not doing that, no. So I, I was not aware that chicken eggs would automatically hatch themselves. I've never seen that happen before in any other pack. So this is fascinating to me. And I have actually grabbed and thrown a few of the eggs because I've actually flown by or whatever, but none of them have resulted in baby chickens, so I didn't even accidentally do it. I have no idea how this is happening. But chickens. Tree climbing chickens. Tree climbing chickens. Um, okay, so if you would come over here and to the machine room and, be, and yeah. beyond. Yeah, one sec. I gotta change my genre of music. Oh. That reminds me, I need to push the start button. I launched my music, but I never started it. You know what, Blade? I haven't seen Picard yet. I want to, but I don't have those streaming services, so I'm sad. All right. <laughs> All right. So, um, I did the thing. I I you went with sure the sure did. I went with the ceiling approach rather than the um, maximized line approach. I tried doing lines of them so I could do like three exporters on each slave, but it just looked really janky. And this looks ever so slightly less janky. So it was a it was a decision of jank by degrees. The uh, the drawer controller here, which yeah. for some reason is just stuck with. Uh, oh, is that? Oh, that's because that's the only thing that's in there right now. Sixteen yes. X N seal. Okay. Yes. It reminds me of the um, the ME controller setup we had in our PO3 run. A, a little bit, yeah. Uh, it, it was kind of intended to be like a hang down controller type deal. Yeah, and it's hanging down and it is a controller. So, with this, uh, if you take a look at the export bus directly next to the storage bus. Uh -huh. um, it, it's set up in such a way that you need to do lots of configuration to get it to work. Uh, there's no way to around that, unfortunately. So, if you ever want something to be exported and stored in bulk, um, if you want to do something in bulk, uh, you'll need to come into an export bus of any any variety. Make sure that there's a crafting card in there. Yeah. Put the item that you want in the filter with possible capacity cards if you need to expand one. And then on the left hand side, the crafting behavior needs to be clicked once to change it to do not use stocked items. 
because if it's selected on the other one, which is the default one, use stocked items, it will only ever export what's in the network. I don't know why it's supposed to default to export what's in the network and then craft, but I think because I have the storage bus on here, it's it essentially recognizes what it stores in here as an option to export and it just levels itself out. The uh, the export buses in the ceiling don't have that option. No, because only the ones that are on the hangy do are the ones that I bothered putting the crafting cart into yet. Oh, I see. It, that appears when you do. Oh, okay. Yeah. All so, right. So if, if you want me to manage this whole damn thing, just put out a request. But that's how you do it if you want to do it yourself. All right, I'll try not to muck it up. All right. And then and you just take your item, you put it in the filter, and then you slap it somewhere on the wall, and then it do. Preferably with the option of uh, removing all the things from the network. So that's where the export bus might come in handy, the other setting, because it might okay. export into this drawer instead of wherever else it is. And then you can swap it once it's in there. I haven't, I haven't fully tested the ability to to easily convert items that are already in the network to this wall and then store them. Yeah. But okay. this is set up as a priority over 9,000. So whatever's on these walls should forcefully store in here. Okay. Well, great. Um, this is, this is all Excessive. overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is. And it's probably um, to the point where we're only going to use like this segment of the wall. Like we're probably not going to overuse this thing. But I wanted the option and I didn't want to have a tiny half ass thing that we're going to have to keep monkeying with the whole time. Sure. So it is what it is. Well, um, in the spirit of slightly over engineering or allowing for over engineering, I upgraded okay. our dynamos in the power section all right um it's a little uh, i see it's yeah I see i see it's a, it's a little bit uh a little bit expanded so, yep with with room to keep going with but we went from 34 going. of these to 70 with six dedicated to powering everything fascinating uh, and you, you had mentioned that you were redoing the power. So what, what happened with the power? Why did it die? I don't know. But, like, the reactor wasn't charging its capacitor. And, like, this system wasn't charging this capacitor. Like, it just wasn't doing anything. And I don't oh. know why. Weird. So, Very weird. Yeah, so I broke a couple of the cables and replaced them. And then the charging started happening again. So I don't know if it was just, like, a server render issue after a reboot or something don't know could be but uh could also be this wire is coming from the reactor ah okay so how's the how's the output ha happening here is that through this little yep. hole through the wall here yeah is that but the entire output into the network it is until we can finally remove all these p2p tunnels and i can just put the wire also th out that way Right, but the, the cable that's going through the wall here, that's where all the power is going out that's not P2P, right? Correct. Or do we have things tapping onto this power line up no, here? The only thing that's tapping onto this power line before here is the stuff in the reactor control room that's making the fuel and stuff. Got it, okay, good. So, Just making sure that we had a, a very dedicated throughput here. So this is ultimately the bottleneck throughput for the entire network. It is. Okay, good, good. At 500,000 IU per tick. Oh, is that all? Well, yeah. Especially considering our, our each output for the uh, wires can't do that anyways. It's it's fine for a little right. bit. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, That's good. Yeah. That's good. Oh, and I had to make this draw like a two drawer system for the diamonds. The top one goes. The top one has priority and it goes to these six, the bottom one round robins to everything else. Ah, okay. Because okay. round robining does not work with priority. Fair. 
but it I, I, I see what you're going for here. You've got the priority diamonds going to the generators that are running the diamond generation. Right. So that was good. Good. And then, yeah, once this box fills up, which it is, then it starts dumping into the bottom one, which we have an overage of currently, which is good. So we oh, have good. throughput to build more of these should we need them, but maybe one day we move on to a different power system. I was kind of thinking we'd have gotten to nuclear power at this point, but uh, apparently that's not... Well, we 100%. can make more nuclear reactors, more, more fission reactors. It's just... We're going to need a lot more thermal centrifuges because the uh, five centrifuges I have making the TBU fuel over in the other area don't keep up with uh, uh, how see. fast that thing chews through them. So, but I did notice another uh, peculiarity. So I also upgraded or I fixed or whatever your uh, polymer clay setup over here. Okay. Um, I set. All the machines that go into like a double, like ones where we have two of, yeah. I set those to round robin, and that sped up all of our clay production. Interesting. They weren't automatically, so I was going to like, so like the uh, the nether quartz was prioritizing going into here because it was the closest one, other than right. this one. So round robining um, makes them both go. Gotcha. I. I thought I had done round robin, but I think I tacked on the last three uh, blocks like the last minute there, so I might have forgotten to do round robin there. Right, so I switched I all those so now they can all trigger. I see you um, added cobble gen. Yeah, and I upgraded the cobble gen. Because, yeah, I was trying to figure out why... Well, when I had initially set up all of the, those uh, simulation chambers in the power room, we were running out of clay. Like, it was going down, but now we are not, so I... The one thing I noticed that's interesting, and I don't know why it is, but if you look at like the the alloy smelters and stuff over here, yeah, and the furnaces, even though they're HP machines, the recipe they're using is MV. So I, interesting. I don't know why. Well, even like the advanced alloy smelter right here is on ultra low voltage. I just click oh, should... buttons to see if I can fix it. Oh, you're yeah. But, yeah, so I, I thought that was uh, curious. Yeah, I was curious that they're not up in, up into the correct voltage. So then I was thinking with the uh, advanced or the upgraded DML system that I want to make with 128 simulation chambers and all that, I might use the multi-block structure for as many of these as exist. Yeah. <laughs> Just ram through all the play we're going to need. Yeah, the multi-block structure is a thing that I think we need to work towards. Um, as I mentioned, I was going to work towards the alloy blast furnace, yeah, which is at least one of the stopping points for some of the multi-block structures. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then I got this laid out downstairs. Ah, right, the EBFs, yes. Yeah, for 16 more EBF, or 12 more. Nice. So yeah, uh, that's I mean that's my plan is the the alloy blast furnace. However, we're going to manage that um, because that will that will get us more access to stuff new mm -hmm. the, the new materials that we don't have yet. Yeah, yeah. And I think the only thing stopping me from making that thing like right this moment is that we have some of the advanced materials that go into it. We just don't have enough. So I just need I need to make more HSLA steel and to make more titanium carbide, and I, I think one more I don't recall. Um, tantalum carbide, yes. So those those things are going to be probably the first three EBFs on this list. Yep. Uh, I see you have them set up for wall sharing. Well, I. Yeah, sort of. Sort of. They're, no, you've got them set. Yeah, they're wall. They they butt up to each other. It's yeah. because with the way how we've been doing them, we have two energy hatches, and I don't know how that. Yeah, that plays in if it's if one energy hatch is for two. Yeah. You know, it, once they're both running, I think that wouldn't work. Might cause problems. Yeah. So I I, I split them out. I I had originally laid this all out so that way I could have. Um, 
15 of these, a 3 by 5 Then I was looking at it like, I don't know if the energy hatches would work, so... Yeah, the energy hatches might be a concern. Right, so then I spaced it back out again. But I, I will have to put some thought into that, because we might be able to do um, hat sharing with the output, perhaps. So we'd have, like for example, we'd have the, we could we could share the maintenance hatch. I think, I don't remember if they said maintenance hatch can be shared or not. But either way, oh um, yeah, the the energy hatch could be vertically stacked instead of side by side. True. Yeah, um, there are other layouts we can do. Yeah, and then sure, the outputs but... could be could be merged. I just fell through the only hole in the space. Yep. Um, <laughs> the output hatches could be merged. I don't think the input hatches could be easily merged. Although, if they have the same inputs, it doesn't necessarily matter if an EB EBF is sharing its inputs, as long as, you know, it, it would ultimately be one or two EBFs sharing an input and just cooking whatever comes its way, as long as all the input fluids are the same. Yeah, yeah. So some some thoughts there, and, and obviously we don't want to do that for one that's going to be cooking all the time. But like we have several of these EBFs that are very intermittent. You're right. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Uh, so blade, the energy hatch sharing does work, but the power throughput might be a problem. Yeah. So like if we if we need it to run at certain RF a tick or EU a tick or whatever, then it might not work correctly if the sharing between two simultaneously running EBFs. Um, I'm noticing this EBF here is is struggling for power. Which one? Uh, the EBF here. The tetrachloride. Yeah, it's it's running out of power. Is it saying not enough power? Yeah. Oh, more energy. Interesting. Let yeah. me look at the... Hmm. This, this might be a 4x or an 8x situation. Maybe. Well, the, the hatches can only take in 2 amps. There are 4 amp hatches. We've just been relying on the default hatches up until this point, but I stumbled into a 4 amp hatch. So we might need to we might need to upgrade if these things are chewing through too much power. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, this four amp converter is also running low. Yeah. <laughs> Fixed. Ha oh, I see. I see. And that's how you know that these conduits are per uh, per output, not per, per, per side. Yep. All right. Good to know. Um. All right. So I, I mean, yeah, and then that's. I mean, it's a fix. It's it is. It is a fix. Yep. Not necessarily a permanent one, but it's one of several temporary fixes. It, it's, that's right. Okay. Uh, where the hell to start? No, wherever you want. Okay. So yeah, I think that that maximum throughput on the the hatch might be part of the reason why not to share the energy hatches, because um, that one right there that we just looked at is using um, it's using essentially the full capacity of the throughput on that EBF. Um, so if you look at oh well, it's it's done cooking now, so whatever. But this this hatch was full, and this hatch was holding steady at four thousand. Which means it was using exactly all of the power that was coming through it. So if we had two EBFs sharing an energy hatch, that would be half the amount of power available. Now if we switch to the 4 amp energy hatches, that might be an answer. Maybe? Um, but I, I don't know. Yeah. 
No, I just tested that they could share. I did not test that how much power they could share. Howdy, Hafenbach. How you doing? Welcome. Alright, so. EBF. Um, yeah. Now, is there... Hold up. So, if we look at the hot ingots. Let's go with hot iridium, sure. So the hot iridium ingots are being made in the blast furnace. Ah, rotary hearth furnace is, uh, furnace is the next answer. Is that a thing? No, that is not a thing we can do. Okay, we don't have neutronium, I don't believe. Uh, neutronium is out of our realm currently, so we're still on EBFs for the foreseeable future. But it is good to know that there is a multi-block upgrade to that. Oh dear god! <laughs> Have you uh, have you taken a peek at all of the various large multi-block structures by chance? No, I. Um, take take a look at the rotary hearth furnace. Oh, that I have looked at that. Yeah, okay. yeah, that one is um, that's quite the fucking structure. It is sick. Yeah, that's it, the. I think that's the multi-block EBF. It is. Yeah, I was. I was looking at seeing how close we might be to multi-block EBF to not have to solve these problems. But yeah, we're, we're not, not close enough to that yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have Naquada alloy frame boxes. Nor do we have neutronium, nor any of the other things on this list. Yeah. Where does it take neutronium? Uh, at the very least, the uh, the core element, the rotary hearth furnace item itself. Takes neutronium springs and dense neutronium plates. Oh shit! Plus, four uh, X ruthenium trinium americium neutronate uh. wire. God, those are hard to say. Holy hell! Okay, not only is neutronium expensive on its own. Yeah. Um. The dense neutronium plates take nine ingots to make one. Nine ingots. Yeah. <laughs> Nine ingots to one plate. Gokey toki. Alright. So whenever, if ever, we get to that point, we're gonna use those puppers sparingly. Yeah. Also, I may not have a accounted for that one in my wall. <laughs> I think I assumed that that dense plate was a double plate and I just put it up on the wall. Uh, Got it. Maybe I need to go fix that. Hang on. Uh, dense, dense... The double plates. There we go. Okay. Uh, and I think because it's a dense neutronium plate, it didn't show up in my double. Yeah, so I've got a double neutronium plate. I didn't know about the dense plates. Okay. That's, that's going to be a whole different ball game. That's We're going to have an entirely new machine room by then, I suspect. Um, this is theoretically designed for the, the totality of the game, but uh, clearly I did not account for all of the possibilities. So, never mind. Alright, well, that's a lovely kick in the pants, whatevs, it's fine. Um, Alright, so, my first goal is the alloy blast smelter. Uh, mainly because we need this to cook up, well, any of the alloys, really. We can cook up any of the alloys in here, um, but if I recall, there are alloys coming up in the very near future that we need this machine for. I don't recall which. Uh, I do believe it was part of the um, the big ass centrifuge unit. Uh, let's see. I made I made the unit, and then it was the vibrant safe vibration safe casing that uses ink alloy, and ink alloy. Uh, was only made possible in the uh, molten form. The hot ingots can't be crafted for whatever reason. Or rather, the hot ingots, the dust to make the hot ingots can't be crafted. Now that's the blast furnace recipe. The molten requires alloy blast melting with vanadium steel, manganese dust, aluminum dust, and yttrium dust. So this is where we need the the, the big ass alloy blast smelter. So that's my next step. Um, I think before I go too deep into this rabbit hole, because that kept catching me last stream, we have tantalum carbide. We don't have a lot of it, so I need to automate that. Um, 
And then the other piece was the high temperature smelting casing, which requires the HSLA steel and the titanium carbide, both of which we have, but not a lot of, so we need to automate that. Um, so that's, I think, where the biggest stopping point is. We have tungsten carbide in plenty, I believe. Uh, plenty enough to, to count, that's fine. So these two, uh, the three metals, HSLA steel, titanium carbide, and the tantalum carbide. Those are the ones that we don't have automated in any way. That's where we're gonna need to do that. Uh, and that's where these EBFs come into play. So what can we do to share walls? Um, let me double check. Uh, let's see, EBF. Glass furnace, all right. So it mentions somewhere, and I don't remember exactly where, that uh, which items you can share or not. I know it's mentioned somewhere in the book. And was it, was it the maintenance hatch that can't be shared as well as the, the core itself? I think that's what it was. Beginning? ABF. All hatches except for maintenance can be shared. Yes, that was the one. So that means that if we are we are sharing here, let me uh whoops. That was uh, unintentional. Alright, so let me take that. Um, let's let's go under the assumption that we are sharing just to see what this is gonna look like uh, We can't go up because we've got coils that need to go there, but can we? Go higher Can these upper ones be maintenance hatch? Yes, the upper ones can be maintenance hatch So this can then, we'll just use these for coil representation. It can be like that if we need to. Oh, that's too, too tall. Whatever, it's fine. We know what, we know what I mean. All so right, if you need adjacent, more adjacent. Uh, EV or IV circuits that are currently in the network, you're SOL for a little while. Cool. Um, Good gotta, to know. I gotta redesign or relay out the, uh, the clean room. So we get, we get 50. 50, you 50 got, IVs, yeah. 50 IVs. Make cool. them count. Cool. For a little while, anyways. I, I will attempt not to do anything that uh, will cause problems. I don't... I don't know what to search for for EV circuit. If these, the yellow text does not show up in the search result. So EV circuit is not a thing. Ah, there we go. Workstation. That's what it's called. So we have we have plenty of EV circuits, and EV is most of what I would be doing anyway for this process here. Okay. So let's let's revisit this quick. So maintenance hatch can go on top. Because previously the previous design was put it on the bottom. Um, but that's not going to work if we need to share um, thingies. So let me move this quick. I'm, I'm just On doing... this note, so before stream you were asking about projects and stuff to be done. Yeah. The, um, the larger clean room in, on that floor of that building wouldn't be a terrible idea mm. at some point. Okay, okay. I, uh, I will I will think on that. Yeah. Currently mulling through the idea of sharing walls with EBFs. Ah, good. So let's, let's grab some hatches. Um, 
Let's grab. I, I don't. They don't need to be good hatches. They just need to be representational hatches. So EV and that's the energy hatch. Um, we don't have any input output hatches. It's fine. The two, one. Let's do one of those. Let's do one of these. Actually, that brings up a good question. Do you need all of the hatches? Like all these EBFs, they don't have a fluid output. Do you even need the fluid output hatch for it to work correctly? Let's find out, shall we? Let's do this from the floor, shall we? Okay, remove hatch. And uh, structure not formed. Wall. Structure formed. Fine. Okay, so you do not need a fluid output if you're not expecting a fluid output. This is good to know because that that changes the required faces. Um, muffler hatch can be shared. So if we're looking at sharing, let's do a muffler hatch. So muffler hatch could be shared. I see. Okay. So I think we we're just putting all the hatches there as an expectation of needing them. Muffler hatch does not need to be mid top. Muffler hatch just needs to be pointing out. So, I mean, this could theoretically be pointing this way if we felt the urge to. It just needs to be pointing out. We can certainly test that. Let's find out. This can be my little test bed here for a, a standalone one. What did I just... Oh, right. A bunch of crap in my pockets. Okay. That's fine. A whole bunch of tiny pile of ashes. Whatever. Go in the network. I don't care. Um, so, muffler. Block. So, block. Muffler. In this case, it does look like it needs to be top center for the EBF, which is interesting. Interesting. Because I remember on the... On these, it didn't matter which way it went. As long as it was facing outward. Um, so I'm, I'm fascinated that that's a requirement on the EBF. But, you know, whatever. Good to know, at least. Alright, so muffler hatch does need to be top center, which means that we need to have a muffler hatch for each individual one. Um, because it needs to be basically right here. So let's, uh, let's put that in its representational space. That needs to be right there. So we can't share muffler hatch, which is fine, I guess. Um, you know what? We're, we're building these. Let's build them. MV, IV, HV, EV. Here we go. EV energy hatch. Let's do two more of those. That's going to be a little bit. Um, so I've got output hatch uh, we've got HV input bus the output bus could be shared because that doesn't matter um, liquid output hatch we don't need. Okay, uh, let's grab some of the casing. Don't know how many we'll need, but some is the answer to that. Uh, 
Okay. Hey, have you looked at how much sodium bisulfate we have by chance? I have not. Hmm. Ah, I see. Where is that coming from? <laughs> I don't... I don't know. Very huh. Well. Yeah, not a clue. Well, alright. Okay, so energy hatch. What I was thinking for the energy hatch is vertical stack. It's still not crafting my uh Oh Damnation. Okay. Hang on. That is back to this problem. These machines don't work. And I have no friggin' clue why. So we need to figure this out. We've got... Well, let's take this circuit out of here. Take these items out of here. Put it into the next machine over. Doesn't work. Take the same setup over here. Take you out. Put you in. Items. Doesn't work. Interesting. It did work when I attempted to change this before. Let's... Is it this fucking circuit? This specific circuit is broken? What the shit? <laughs> I don't understand. Alright, let's make a new one. This circuit can go rotten hell. I, I I said this circuit can go rotten hell. All right, now let's go re request a couple more coils. See if it works. Works fine. Holy crap. Holy crap. You know, you know that bitching I was doing about the assembler that wasn't working? Yep. I figured it out. Was it not plugged in? It was the circuit. The circuit itself was a broken item. It worked when I put in a, an exact copy of that circuit, freshly made. Like the programmable circuit one? Yeah. yeah. Huh. It wouldn't work when I put that specific circuit in another machine, but if I took that other machine circuit and put it to the right number, it worked fine. That one circuit item would not work. Well, I hope you voided it. Oh, I did that immediately, yes. Alright, good. Because fuck that circuit. Yeah. That was driving me nuts. <laughs> we don't need that lurking around. Um, Making hydrochloric is the way to get sodium bisulfate. No, Blade, because that update happened well before this machine room ever was conceived. I don't know. The only thing I can think of is um, every once in a while I would take, you know, a handful of circuits and configure them all at the same time. But that's always worked. So, like, if I hit a 1 here, it would turn them all into 1 circuits. But that's always worked. And it's worked for every other circuit in here. So, I don't, I don't get it. But I'm just going to call it a fluke. Wash my hands of it. And be done. So we're going to go back to this thing. EV energy hatch. <sighs> you go there. Okay. Oh, that that's not going to work. I'm sorry, that's not going to work because of the... Um, because of the coils. I just remembered that. We're going to use these as a stand-in, so I don't keep doing that. I 
And this might be a case of too complicated for the benefit. Because really all we're doing is we're saving on coil blocks and a couple hatches and then physical space. That's really all we're saving. Um, so I don't know if this whole practice of merging the two blocks together is going to be very beneficial. But I'm more curious about what can be done than anything. Uh, so let's see. So muffler, muffler. Son of a bitch. Um, I can't reliably put energy hatches on any of these faces because they would theoretically be shared with the adjacent ones. Yeah, and conserving resources is a very good reason to do this in early game. Um, and even when we're starting to do stuff like the tantalum or the tungsten steel coil blocks, we have a very limited amount of that material. So setting up, you know, a couple dozen EBFs with the tungsten steel coil blocks is really expensive. Um, so there's still a, a theoretical reason why you do it, but that one is mostly cook time. So in in practice, we just need to wait a little bit before having enough tungsten steel. Um, but still, it's fascinating to find out what we can do or not. Like, this could go here. And then we'd have a power line going up the center. But that's not going to be all that helpful. Um, let's see. Let's grab a couple of these. So this would be something like this. And we'd essentially be trading off tungsten steel for end steel because we'd end up using more of this to accommodate for missing this uh, but it's certainly an option so let's see if there's any other cost or space savings methods that we can work with here um, the other thing to consider is that assuming that this one is the end of the line we could do input bus um, or whether we'd want to share input bus. And let me change you so I don't keep doing that. Uh, let's see. Alright, so we share input bus and we can also share output, which is great except for when it comes to needing to do the fluids. We could do the fluid input as a share. Uh, eh, there we go. Um, input, fluid input, output shared. So all that's good. But then what happens when we have a third adjacent one directly to this? Then we need to have another input output here or we'd have to rely on a, a stack of four of them to have one line of I.O., one line of essentially nothing, and then another line of I.O. So then we'd have four of them adjacent, which isn't saving us that much space. Unless we could do like a stack of six of them. So how big would a stack of six of them be? Assuming we start from this side, We'd have a uh, controller, controller, controller. And this one would be an, an unusable space or we'd have to overlap into the floor. So then we would have a line of six of them. So then we would have shared IO, shared IO, and then shared IO. That's not bad. That's not terrible. And then each one would have their own muffler. Let's see if we can get another muffler. Uh, do we not have muffler hatches automated? We, we don't have muffler hatches automated. Let's fix that problem. <laughs> I 
It doesn't particularly matter which muffler hatch either. Let's do let's do the mediums. Muffler hatches. Gimme. Give Gimme. Give Because if we can do a shared input-output, um, that would let us double up on... It would, it, would, it would really depend on how well it handles splitting the resources between them. So say, for example, we get a stack of tungsten carbide and a, sta a stack of titanium carbide, and they both come in at the same time. Will it just share the load and do them simultaneously? Is it going to be a problem? I have no idea. Um, but let's put you there. Okay. Uh, and we've got energy, theoretically. And there's nothing really to put on these sides. That one formed, that one did not. What What's missing on this one? What did I do wrong? I didn't do the floor piece. Floor. There we go. There we go. Alright, so we do have a theoretically formed full block EBF. Okay. And if we push this back a block and had the power coming through here, we could potentially have a line of Five? No, we would not. EVF would just pull the first available item from the input hatch? That would make sense, yeah. Okay. So let's disassemble that, and let's build out a line of it, and see what it looks like. I think this is the only part I'm over, I'm concerned about, and this is basically a nothing. So I'm not concerned about it because we we ultimately have the same problem over here. Um, and those we were also doing a four amp, so that's fine. Okay, let's disassemble. Done. Took a whole lot less time to disassemble than it uh, than it uh, could have. All right, uh, let's take out these. Okay, so let's assemble. The only thing we don't have is the coil blocks. Um, hmm. All right. And these are just all the way across. Whoops. Oops. Falling through the floor. Let me, let me fix that. Let 
me get rid of you. <laughs> so energy hatch would essentially be every other line and lined up with these guys. Uh, let me steal a couple of these just to... Oh, there's the maintenance hatches. Um, need two more energy hatches. Make me two more, please. That's going to take a little bit. Alright. Oh. Apparently I did not use the right tiles. Large tiles. Large tiles. There we go. Uh, so we would be using the four amp, most likely. So let's make a handful of those. I need more energy hatches. What am I doing? Uh, two more energy hatches for the bottom here. I did not, I did not finish the whole process for all of them, but it's fine. I need six more. Now right, you get cranking on that. Uh, we also need two more uh, EBF furnace controllers, which we do not have automated. I feel like that's a thing we can automate easily enough. And if this ends up being too janky to set up, then we can always just undo it. And we can make a line of four of them like this. Or go back to our three by three. It'll be fine. Give me these, please. Blast furnace, blast furnace. Okay. All right. So then we need a whole bunch of coil blocks. All right. Uh, that we do not have automated. And we don't have an easy way to automate that. Um, it's 2x tungsten dill wire and 8 of it, so that's 4 ingots per. Hello, Gila. Hello, Gila. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. Um, hmm. I see. So the way that he had this set up, he's got these set up like this, which is kind of easy to get um, in, in the round because we have got a single line. But since we're stacking the line, it dipped dip back to the wires. Uh, since we're stacking the line, it makes it nearly impossible to reach these inner ones. Um, that will be a slight concern. I mean, we can access them from the top and drop down if we need to but it is not easily accessible. 
I could scoot these back and these forward to make use of that space. Maybe that's a thing we do? I'd hate to have to rebuild these again, but I think that might be the best bet. I get it. I get it. I get it. Come here, get it. No, come here. Come here, come here. Come here, come here. Kitty. Kitty, kitty. Systems on a chip. We got, we got better chips. Rapidly advancing technology. Hooray. Hi, Kitty. Hi, hey, Kitty. How are you doing? Oh, you would you would have had a good time yesterday, Haven Punk. He was uh, he was chirping up a storm. It was kind of adorable. All right, so we got our energy hatches. Um, we do need more HV output buses. We need three of them total. We need two more of those. Um, we also need uh, HV input hatches. Uh, we have input hatch two. And then we need one more input bus. Also need four more mufflers. And we need two more automatic maintenance hatches. Coils are going to be a problem. Um, what would you recommend for coils for these EBFs? Should we just go straight with the uh, tungsten steel? Um, I mean, that would probably be best. It's just going to be wildly expensive. So at, at the very least, nichrome. Okay. But uh, if you can calculate how many like tungsten steel wires and stuff we'll need make like exactly as many then yeah we can do that okay uh, i just don't want to overuse it because we're that one's that one's kind of expensive right now so i the think fact we that should I'm have going... enough we'll, we'll have enough ingots i think to do it obviously but i don't think we want to use any more yeah and like so the fact that i'm going through the effort to minimize the coil usage is probably for the best anyway probably for the best all right then all right, let's scoot these out one block because I think having access between the layers would be nice. So these will go back, these will go forward. As much as I hate having a rebuild, it's for the best. Patches can be on the top, so we've got that covered. Energy hatch. Okay, casing. Okay. 
So that's going to be the the rough the rough shtick of it. Uh, we do need the um, the six amps under there. So let's uh, make room. There, six amps. Four amps. There we go. Four amps. Oh, hang on. So this one is also having problems with energy. Interesting. All right, all right. I'm trying to think if doing them under here then would be the best practice. Because we're going to ultimately need two side inputs for these things, at least until we upgrade our cables. Um, God, the upgrading of the cables is gonna be a nightmare. Because these conduits, we're currently running the end steel, um, and we'd have to upgrade to signalum next, or lumium. Maybe even worth jumping to signalum at this point, honestly, um, because we'd have to upgrade every single one in our entire line, because you cannot connect one tier to another. So if I immediately replace one of these with signalum, the next one down will not connect to it. So you have to do every single conduit. Um, how much do we have for Lumium? We got 520. And we have 2600 signalum. Okay. It, uh, we'd have to upgrade from Lumium anyway, but it would be a four, a four to one or one to four conversion. So we wouldn't have to do that many Lumiums. All right, question for you. All right. Um, I'm finding more of these EBFs running out of power. Uh, ah. So the, the whole second-sided thing is a thing. Huh. However, okay. we do have the materials to go up to Signalum conduits if we wanted. Because that would jump the Lumium step and instead go straight to Signalum, which would semi-future-proof us, at least for a little bit. It's true, we do, yeah. Um, so instead of attempting to plan around the need for multiple sides to plug into, should we just bite the bullet and upgrade? Uh, yeah, we can We can do that. Okay. Do you want me to set up an autocraft for it um, somewhere? Auto craft for the Signalum and Lumium. If you want to just tack it onto your current thing, sure. Otherwise, I can take the moment to set up the auto craft on my side. Because uh, I, yeah. I, I had definitely talked about doing that on mine on my machine wall. Yeah, because you've got the wires like a pattern. Do you have a pattern for both of the wires already? Yep. Okay, then yeah, I can stack that on for right now. Okay, that's fine. Because yeah, it would need to go upgrade from the end steel to the lumium to the signalum. Alright, so he's he's doing that. Right, what? What? What did you just say? Uh, did we're you just say to me, boy? We're currently using the end steel conduits, right? Correct. So... The end steel would need to upgrade into the lumium conduits, which would then upgrade into the signalum conduits. So it's a two step. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. That's literally the only option. No, it's a good idea. Oh, okay. Alright. 4 amp. Uh, EV. 
converters. So we only have the 16 amp automated. So let's do that. How many times do I run into something that's not automated and I just gotta do it? I could do more of them, but because <laughs> I'm literally right now just trying to justify not automating more of them. Um, but if we're going to be jumping up to IV pretty quickly here, I don't think it's worth doing more. All right, well, you you can craft them now. Alrighty. So then I might need to go through and upgrade every single wire in the house. Yeah, which is what I was hoping the P2P was going to avoid, but... Right. And I know the theory behind out. it, but that did not pan yeah, out, no. It didn't, it didn't work out. It was a good idea for like a week. <laughs> it would be really nice if the P2P were something that we could control more easily. Like, I think the throughput on those P2P... No, no, we, we confirmed that the P2P throughput was not limited to a single wire connector. They were just having their own limitation issues. Yeah, it's got its, like, its own bandwidth yeah. problem. Lame. All right, fine. All right, let's start up crafting some of the Signalum energy conduits. You know, for return on investment, that's not bad. I queue up 128 Signalum energy conduits, and it's only 32 ingots of Signalum and 7 Lumium. So that's really not yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's a 4 to 1 yeah going up so that's nice yeah that's that's pretty or handy. A one to four i mean all right do it it'll take a little bit but do it because we got to request all the cables to get uh, cooked up and then yeah those are starting to flow in already nice uh in fact let's go to the machine room and watch that happen a little bit or it's done it's done <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. So that is how fast this machine room is. Is I didn't get to it in time to watch the cables cook. The cables got requested, they got dumped into the network, and they were done before I came over here to say to, to say what's up. Okay. So I don't know if I'm gonna do this at the moment. Cause it's a lot of work. But the theory is, let's go in here, because this is the best place to do this. The theory is, oh god, I can't do that. I was gonna, I was gonna do here, but you can't. But you, you right click, and it replaces. And that, but then you lose connection all the way across the board. So, not doing that at the moment. That might have to be an offline thing when we're not doing stuff because it's going to mess everything up everything because as soon as I replace this conduit I have to go through everywhere and update the conduits so I'd have to, I'd have to break through all of the walls and identify where he's moved the stuff behind the walls and figure out how to how to replace all that crap and I'd have to follow the cable over to here, where it then, uh, it's not even coming through here. Where the hell is it going? Oh, okay, yeah, this is not a now situation. Maybe if I'm feeling particularly spicy, I'll come in here and I'll mess up everything while he's working on stuff, <laughs> and then we'll have to figure it out from there, but, but no. Um, and this might also be a good time to get rid of the the reliance on the P2Ps wherever that's happening. Um, like I know for a fact we've got P2P reliance over here. No, no, that one's been upgraded. I thought we had that one on P2P. Um, I think he might have done most of this. Nope, there we go. There's a P2P. So that's where this co conduit here would have to run this way and replace that and then that. And then that. So we have some work to do ahead of us. And I'm not entirely sure I want to do that right now. But we can plan for that. So when I put a 16 or a 4 amp here, it will be able to have a cable run underneath it without causing problems.
yes, messing with all the things. And I, I see that. I see those requests. I'm, 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 I'm gonna do it. I think for kitty time, it might be good to do a treat thing too. But let me, uh, let me hydrate myself first. Kitty time. <laughs> Gizmo. I, I have I have some lower back issues so I gotta I gotta work it out real hard okay uh, so we've been temporarily waylaid by rebuilding this to front and then um, did I did I rebuild too far forward I think I rebuilt too far forward. I intended to move one space. I think I moved two spaces. But it's fine. This can be here. And this one can scoot forward one instead of this one coming backward one. It's a little bit cramped right here. Hey, fine. Quick opinion. Okay. Uh, come down to EBFs quick. Okay. Wait, where are we? EBFs. Okay. Um, is this too far forward? Button up right against the middle walkway. Uh, I mean, technically... It's, mm. it's in the space. It, it is in the space, so I think. But it might be okay. it might be uh, cramped. Nah, you're good because upstairs I have wires hanging over, and I built stuff right along the line too. So. Fair enough. All right, cool. If I did it, you can do it, and I can't complain. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right, so let's let's get some of these things in place. So input, input, output. Input, 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 output. So muffler hatch has to be in the middle. So we can put that down. Muffler. So what are we working on? We are working on a merged line of six EBFs because we need to automate more materials. Some of these EBFs are cooking too hard and need to have the load shared a little bit. Some of them, um, we, have, we have more materials that we need. My current workload is tungsten steel, or sorry, tungsten no, uh, HSLA steel, titanium carbide, and tantalum carbide are three um, alloys that we need that we don't have much of. We've we've basically made them by hand up until this point. So I'm working on more EBFs because we're out of them, and we need more of them. Okay, so. Uh, did output bus, input bus, input hatch. So if I do 
fluid in, item out, item in. I think that will work. Okay. And then the rest can be these things. Concerning that I had exactly enough to do that. Uh, sorry, EBF is the electronic blast furnace. That is the thing that takes various powders and a liquid and turns them into a lovely little metal ingot that we need. Alright, maintenance hatches. Uh, these... We're gonna go right there. Should have thought of that beforehand. But it's fine, a little bit of extra drilling didn't hurt anyone. There we go, maintenance hatches. Alright. So we've got our power mostly hooked up. I do need those four amps. Now getting power. Ow. These are getting power. These are getting power. Okay. So now all I need is the coils. Let's do calculations on how many coils I might need. Um, so we need a straight line across the back and across the front. And then we need every other in the middle. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, 26, 7, 8, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 33. So, we need 33 times 8 and times 8. What the hell is 33 times 8? 264. Tungsten carbide, tungsten steel, tungsten steel, and we specifically need the 2x wire, so we need 264, and that is 264 ingots straight. Um, I think that's half of what we've got currently. How's um how's using half of our current tungsten steel? Sound? All right, sure. All right. Do it. 
and then we also need uh, vanadium steel foil in equal amount. don't have in plate form but we do have an ingot form. Do I not have a plate set up for that one? I must not have. Fascinating. I wonder if that's not on my list and I did it wrong. Let's take a quick peek at my list. Vanadium steel plate. Uh, vanadium steel plate it did not make it to my list. Um, let me double check to see if there's a recipe for that's not plate. No, plate the foil. Okay. I must not have uh, set that up as a yes requirement when I was doing the, uh, the foils. I'll have to double check to make sure all my foils have a yes next to the plates as well on my sheet. Because uh, that's a requirement for sure. Yep, I messed that one up. I messed that one up. Dag nabbit. That means we need a whole lot more plate um, recipes than I expected. Alright, well let's just do this one then. We need a vanadium steel foil recipe. Vanadium steel foil recipe. Uh, plate recipe, sorry. Plate recipe in the bender. Oh god, I might need I might need another one of these. fine. It's fine. Vanadium steel foil. Start. Alright, and then the other thing that we need for these is liquid nichrome. Which we should be able to do, no problem. It's one ingot of nichrome per uh, one of these coil blocks, so we only need 33. Two sixty four, two sixty four. Good. And these are all done in a, a base assembler. I don't have the means to automate that over here easily, but I do have free machines to do it in. So that's that's gonna be a thing. So you can go here. You can go here. Um, And then I will need to go liquidize the nichrome. Nine times where I said yes to foil but not to plate. Okay. So that is nine extra slots that I need for plate automation. And I only had five slots available. So I'm going to need another ME interface probably just slapped in the front here. Which is unfortunate but it'll have to do it'll have to do um i don't i don't want to fix that problem right now so um blade would you would you be so kind as to put a note in discord to remind me to do that later because <laughs> otherwise i will not remember thanks I need an extractor. You, you'll do. Kitties are gone. Hi, I'm back.
Uh, machine room. There we go. Alright, liquids. That is a 25 second cook. So we got a little bit of time. I'm gonna have to come in here at some point and put these foils back in here. Actually, I can do that right now. Perfect. Okay. So that's gonna take a while. They are being imported back in the network, so they'll they'll just they'll just show up here as as they're done. So while that's cooking, since that's going to be minutes um, <laughs> let's let's let this sit for a little while and go do something else now I could attempt to spread the love um, in fact that might not be a terrible idea uh, let me grab some buckets let's grab a Bucket and a bucket and a bucket. 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 Stack. Stack. Partial stack. It's not going to be perfect because I'm going to have to consolidate. <laughs> that was me rapid blinking as I was mentally adjusting to how long that was actually going to take at 25 seconds per freaking craft. So that's gonna that's gonna cut the time down to a half an hour, give or take. I'm gonna have to come back and baby this a little bit. So yeah, let's go do other things. So while we're doing that, we need to figure out what's needed to actually get the next ingots that we need. So we need tantalum carbide and that tantalum carbide does get cooked into an ingot which gets cooled so that's fine. Tantalum carbide dust is a mix of tantalum and carbon, go figure. And let's do a remembrance on that. I'll remember you. So tantalum carbide. We also need titanium carbide, which is a mix of go figure titanium and carbon. Um, surprise, surprise. And then we also need HSLA steel. And that one is a mixture of invar vanadium, titanium, molybdenum. That one is a little bit more of an actual surprise surprise. Um, okay, so let's go take a peek at what is going on down here. 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 Here, here we go. <laughs> so this is where um, Pine had set up several machines for mixing. So we've got tungsten steel, tungsten carbide, nichrome, canthal. So these are all the outputs and then the inputs we've got the tungsten, the steel, etc. So this mixing setup is pretty much what I need currently. Um, we've got signalum, ardite, red steel, sterling, bismuth, black steel, black bronze, tin alloy, aluminum, Tin, Electrum, Brass, Silver. So these are all the, the macerated outputs. And then Mixy Dust for the inputs. Um, so I need more. I need, I need more of that thing. And that's where we got this over here. This one is the graphene that I had to set up last time. 
Uh, he's done some more expansion. This is all the plastic bars, I do believe. Okay. So we're going to need a couple mixers. Uh, let's first see if tungsten... I'm pretty sure tungsten dust is already automated. It is, indeed. Or sorry, that's tungsten steel dust. Tungsten carbide. Do we have just base tungsten dust? Tungsten dust. Yes, yes we do. Okay. That's good. And this one I accidentally set to mixing more tungsten steel. It's fine. Tungsten dust. Nickel, gold, obsidian, diamond, and then the various othium powders. So we got tungsten. Um, I think that was the only one in my list that I needed. Or the only one that's down here that's already done. Here, let me let me see what else we need. Maybe this clipboard will help. Clipboard. So, we need tantalum carbon. See how I just phased right through you? That was pretty cool, huh? It was nice. It was, it was very, uh, very handy. What, what you up to? Uh, gonna set up the mixers for the powdered versions of the things that I need. The the HSLA steel, the tantalum carbide, and the titanium carbide—the three that we need to start up the um, the alloy blast smelter. Got it. All right. Um, I think it's gonna be a quick matter of just setting up the mixers and then getting those cooking. I've got the uh, the tungsten steel, tungsten carbide, yeah, tungsten steel coil blocks. Those are cooking right now. It's gonna take a half an hour to freaking finish those things. So I'm working on something else in the meantime, which is the other half of the EBF process I was working on. Nice. So that those alloys can start cooking so we can actually have them at some point in the future because they're going to take forever. So I'm just trying to figure out which ones we already have on auto grind and auto mix and which ones I need to set up new grinders and mixers for. All right, all I'll right. I'm standing here with my clipboard trying to figure it out. Invar vanadium. Uh, titanium and molybdenum. Pretty sure that's how you spell that. I'm so used to just seeing the word and knowing how to pronounce it. I, I don't remember how to spell it. Um, okay. So, we have a duplicate of titanium, so that's not needed. A duplicate of carbon, so that's not needed. Eh. Oh, control Z is not a, not a button. We'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. So, tantalum. We do not have a dust of tantalum. We also don't have much tantalum, so we don't want to have that auto grinding very much. Uh, how do we get more tantalum? From tantalite ore, apparently. I'm sure there's some other method, but that appears to be the best one. How do we get Tantalmore? It's gotta be a different way. I don't think there's a different way. Because the small piles don't appear to come from anything else. Pyrolusite. That's it. So pyrolusite is not from here. Okay. 
Pyrolucite is not from any of the um, the microminers. Tantalum, tantalite is not from any of the microminers. How do we get tantalum in a reasonable way? Pyrolucite. Tantalite. Uh, have you figured out how to get tantalum in a reasonable quantity? I'm seeing it comes from two ores that can't come from microminers. Tantalum, huh? Yeah, we have like 500 of it, but as soon as we automate that, it's gone quick. As far as I can tell, all of the various various sizes of piles of dust come from either pyrolucite or tantalite. And right. all three variants of each of those only come from buying it or or, gen or world gen. I haven't seen anything from microminer. Here it is. But we have it. I'm assuming we bought some. Yeah, we certainly have bought the pyrolucite from manganese. Yeah. And then we just... Yeah, get it as a byproduct. Um, so what might be worth messing around with um, is the ore drilling plant. Is that going to end up being like the liquid one where it just generates ores, or is that actually drill? It just, I, I don't know. Huh. I haven't made it, but it says a multi-block mining machine that covers a large area and produces huge quantities of ore. Okay. So... Hmm. There's that. And I know that that's one that they keep telling us to make or this one it's, it's one of the pending quests here it is that might be worth poking at see if we can grab large quantities of pyrolucite from the world yeah okay That thing that I said that I didn't want to automate, I'm having to freaking automate. I didn't want to have to automate more of the uh, EV converters, but here we are. Do another uh, EV converter. Uh, eight amp this time, and let's hope that that's enough. Uh, we also need three mixers of the EV variety. We have one. Let's do two more. And double check that these are all EV mixer recipes. They are. HV for HSLA, but that's fine. EV recipe is fine. They all require a number one circuit. Hello, Sparkle. How you doing, Sparkle? Oh. 
all of the buttons. All of the buttons. The booze pause did work. Um, does it show up as an option for you to click and then tells you that it's not available? Because I think that's what um, what Big D had said. Does it show as unavailable, or does it only warn you after you try to click it? Because I don't want people seeing it if it's not if it's not usable. Like, if there's a big LX over it, that's fine. Uh, my mixers aren't mixing. Oh, hi there. Okay. So we got mixers. You have to click it to see I can't use it? Well, dang it. Okay. I, I might have to just get back into the habit of turning that off then. I was happy with the pause option, but if it's gonna give people false sense of hope and then dash it, I don't wanna I don't wanna do that. Uh, let's see. I don't know how many master writers we're gonna need, so let's grab two for the moment. Also gonna need a couple of the 8x N steel. Okay. Uh, All right. So here, here is where we are going to do the thing. We'll do. We'll give it two spaces. Oh, I didn't grab my, uh, my EV converter. I need to grab that. Two spaces. EV. Really. Two spaces. EV converter. And then we swap of that. Let's we'll replicate what he's got going on here. My goodness. Cole the pleb, thank you for the bits I appreciate. Startled me once again, even though Sparkle did actually put a reminder in my Discord and I forgot to do it again. <laughs> oh god. Alright. <laughs> you can only do so much to remind me to do the things that I'm gonna forget to do. <laughs> yep. Yep, indeed. Alright, so we'll have mixer, mixer, mixer. And then if we need to macerate, I don't know how many, but we only have so many items on the list. Tantalum, carbon, titanium, invar, vanadium, molybdenum. So at most, five. Carbon, I'm pretty sure we have bajillions of, so I don't need to... Um, tantalum, we do need to grind. Titanium, probably not. Uh, invar, maybe. Invar is usually an end result, not a, uh, a mid-step. Vanadium, probably is fine. But let's find out. Vanadium, no dust. So, okay, we probably need to do that. We don't... We do have vanadium. Dust, specifically. I don't know if it's being grinded up, though. Hmm. How you doing though, Cole? Tungsten. Tungsten, okay. So. Uh, let's go with this. So these mixes are just a single interface on top. I think he's got an, a robot arm. Pulling the stuff. Pretty sure. Yeah. Robot arm, item filters, etc. So let's grab some interfaces. Robot arms. Uh, MV, MV is probably fine.
Brain. Brain not braining. Filters. We need item filters. And none of those are friggin' automated. Item filter. Let's just do all of them. It doesn't... Hmm. I don't actually know which one we have the most of, so we'll just do one. Yeah. Uh, Ordic filter... And smart item filter. Okay, you got the things. Let's go back and do the stuff. I missed. I missed. There we go. Okay, interfaces. We need interface. Let's configure these for what they are. Uh, so we need a drawer. I need the key. I do believe we need more drawers, but I don't know which ones we're going to need to do yet, so we'll, we'll grab those in a sec. There, we'll be fine. Okay. Uh, we need power. Pa power. Power. Yep, yeah, good. Uh, we need a drawer controller. Okay. Mm so far, so good. All right, so let's do. Ooh, tiny wafers. The tiniest, yeah. The cheesiest. Tantalum dust. And we need carbon dust. That might be easier to configure them from quantity wise. Let's see, how do, how do we get these things going? One of each, oh, technically. Alright, that's fine. All right, uh, so that's the. Eh. 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 There we go, titanium and carbon. So we got carbon again. Titanium. All right, and then we need invar vanadium. Titanium and molybdenum. Okay, that should be all we need. Yep. Then we need the circuits in each of these. Okay. Okay. Robot arms. Item filter. And that is where we need to set all of these again. Um, K 
keep exact? Probably. Okay. Let the name in carbon. Nope. That was nope. That was not the. Uh, Titanium and carbon. Titanium. Carbon. And then you are the opposite. Carbon. And tantalum. Stop it. Stop it. I'm done I'm done clicking I don't personally like this method with the, the robot arms and the all the the Greg tech covers I don't like the method it's very effective um, and as we found out when doing the oxygen last night it's much faster than Andrio conduits but I don't like that there's no visibility to it like, I couldn't look at this line of machines and know how the hell it was ever configured. There's no visibility to the robot arms, the conveyors, the pumps, all those tacked on covers. You don't know that they're there unless you happen to right click screwdriver to see what it is. I don't like that. I don't like hidden mechanics that you have to discover. It's even more useless when dealing with a multiplayer game. Like if I did everything myself, Chances are, I'd probably know. But since each of us has gone our own paths of automation, he's relied heavily on the Greg Tech covers. If I didn't know that, and if I didn't know to look specifically for the covers on each machine to see what he's done, I would have no idea how this thing was set up. No freaking clue. Um, and I don't like that all that information is buried deep that you have to discover each time. It makes it very difficult to repeat automations. All right. We need, we need some cables. So these now have things available. Branching output to bottom. Now I do wonder why these are not pulling in. Did I, did I mess this up? Invar, vanadium, titanium, molybdenum to make the HSLA steel. Ah, two invars. Two invars. Two, two invars. Two invars. We do not have any titanium dust. We we did we had like ten invar dust. Um, so I need to reconfigure you. To keep exact two. There we go. So that's HSLA steel. Uh, so that means that you need to import.
Titanium Carbide Dust. Ah. Uh. Keep exact. There we go. Give me that back. Alright, so we don't have any tantalum dust. So tantalum is a thing. Tantalum ingots supplied. I uh, put the robot arms back. Is visibility to something on the on the face, but only works if you have an empty face that makes it useless. So, yeah. Okay, filter, um, tantalum, ingot, keep exact. Import. Okay, that's good. Now that's going to grind up like all of our tank. Is that a problem? How do you do that? You don't do that. That's how you do that. Okay. Alright, we have no tungsten. Minor issues. We're also going to have no tantalum. Minor issues. Uh, is titanium in here somewhere? I don't I don't see it. I don't I don't see titanium in the list of things that are being grinded, so I think we need to. Alright, question for you before I go too crazy on this. What's that? Um I, I have I have needs of several dusts. Um tantalum being one of them, so I'm automating that one. Uh, do you know Why are you automating tantalum? Because I need tantalum carbide. No, I didn't say why, I said how. Oh, I mean, I'm automating the grinding of it into dust. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so do we have titanium automatically grinded into dust? I don't see it on your, your dust grinding mixy floor here. No. Okay. Um, and then vanadium? Also no, we're also not infinitely generating that one. Right. Yeah, and tantalum grinding to dust is going to be a problem too, because we don't have much of that either. Although, I think we only need it in dust form for mixes anyway, maybe? I don't honestly know. It's hard to say. Oh, but yeah, we need, we need ores. We do, which is why I was wondering about that ore drilling plant. Yeah. And invar. Invar. Uh, vanadium. Ah, I see. Uh, howdy, Paige. How you doing? Oh, you're also lurking. Okie dokie. You, you go be titanium lurky. Titanium. Dang it. Done. Alright, so we're gonna need two more macerators. Point of note, we have zero vanadium. Yeah, it's that's a rare one. Yeah. Maybe maybe we do do that or or thing. Or... Maybe we do do. Uh -huh. All right. So how's about we unconfigure that at the moment? Because I've already burned through a bunch, and. We have we have a bit left, but not not much. All right. Well, 
uh, changing gears again. Because I can't really finish automating these uh, ores without, you know, the base materials to make the ores. Uh, we need, we need, uh, we need a storage bus. Uh, we need more drawers, storage bus. Slap a. Slap a, slap a, slap a, slap a. Um, Blade, are you talking about tantalum or titanium? Or which which one are you talking about not being that rare? Vanadium. Oh. Oh, yeah, because the, the vanadium. Vanadium magnetite, whichever that one is called, yes. Um, but we have not been actively mining that one. Um, let's see. That one comes from a tier 3 microverse run. But you only get one stack of it. Man, this is six stacks of a tungsten ore, both shelite and uh, tungstate, for a single stack of a vanadium magnetite. Is there anything else that vanadium comes from? Rubies, of the various gemstones. <laughs> it is rough to send out a miner and get 13 stacks of ore when you only need one of those stacks of ore. <laughs> but yes, I get where you're coming from. Um, so yeah. Looks like vanadium is going to be a challenge regardless due to the limited amount that you get from a microminer. Interesting. So that's why he was talking about the miner, the, the drilling plant. Alright, we're gonna do the drilling plant. of all that crap. All of the crap. I don't want the crap. Go away. Get away. Out of my pocket. What's with everyone wanting me to fix my back tonight? Jeez. Uh, there is pain, Paige. Yes, that is, that is a thing. We all want me to stretch. Okay. You want you want a close up of the the scraggly beard? Right. Is a good point, Blade. I have not automated the things for the bounties. Um, and, I mean, to be fair, we have a couple pennies, so we could safely buy a bunch of vanadium. Uh, you know what? Maybe that's an idea. It wasn't vanadium, though, that we were fully out of. What's it? It was vanadium. We don't have any more vanadium. We just have vanadium steel. No, oh, fuck it. I'm gonna buy some vanadium magnetite. Let's do four stacks for right now. 
And let's put that up in the more processing doodad. Finish. Finish. I thought that was a start. Start. Alright, I bought four stacks of vanadium to get us going for now. I'm going to start working on the miner. Nice. Uh, Demos, the factory. It's going. Um, it, everything's, everything's going wrong currently. Or rather... Everything's going so right that we have no materials left for anything else to go right. Yeah, that's it. We probably do have it automated. The the widgets, the circuits, the LV conveyor modules, all that fun stuff. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge would be actually doing them. Like just just doing and submitting the the thingies. A hundred? A hundred? Four Ender Widgets. Four Ender Widgets. Four Ender Widgets and seven Electronic Circuits. Uh, this one. I got money. There. I just more than paid for my Vanadium Magnetite purchase. <laughs> That is, that is pretty neat. I like it. Uh, also, I still have a, a ore in my pocket. That's the uh, that's the finish. Start. To, yeah. Son of a bitch. Start. Get in there. Okay, so, miner. Let's take a peek at the miner requirement. While I hold a kitten. Alright, so this is the large miner. Steel frame box, steel machine casing, and the basic ore drilling plant. That's the hardest part. Um, because it requires EV stuff. Hey, why are you squirming? Why are you squirming, kitty? Why are you squirming? It's so comfy here. It's so comfy. Kitty. This might be another rabbit hole, now that I think about it. Because uh, this requires... Uh, this is it, it looks identical, but yes, the other one was for fluids. So this is for ores, and the question that we have is, does this pull the ores out of the world, or does it uh, generate ores like the other one generates liquids? I mean, technically, it's pulling liquids out of the world, because it has a finite amount it can pull, but I have a feeling that this, this is going to actually pull the ores from the, the world, rather than just generate fresh. But I don't know for sure. That's what I'm trying to figure out. But let's make one. Let's find out. So the basic ore drilling doodad is um, a number two circuit in an assembler. And we need these things. So let's, uh, let's go over to my machine room. 
and set up a number two temper. Oh, we need to fix this. Yes. I think. I think. I think. Make you our number two circuit. All right, so that's going to finish cooking the last few. So here's our number two circuit. So we need, we need stuff. We need an EV machine hull. Titanium frame boxes. Uh, we need four EV circuits. Four motors and four pumps and four conveyors, I believe that was. Yep. So we need four. Here, let's uh. I finally got a workstation. Uh, we need four conveyors, four pumps. And then four motors. Okay, there's our conveyors. There's our pumps. Finally got your workstation, nice. There's our motors. Uh, EV hull is still not happening. I think we're just waiting on a whole bunch of, um, a whole bunch of something. What are we waiting on? We're waiting on titanium plates. Do we have... Titanium plates aren't happening? power. No power. Ah, I see. I see. Definitely running into the power situation here. That did not help. That did not help at all. Um, hmm. Why though? These are drained. They're they're drained and they're not getting more power. Uh, minor minor crisis, um, and I don't know how to solve. Well, this better be good. My bending machines have stopped receiving all power. Oh yeah, I saw. I noticed that. Yeah. I, I added another conduit face to see if it was just a throughput issue. But they are definitely not receiving power, and if they are, it's a very slow trickle. Like, I don't have very many of them running full speed right now. Uh, 
Ah. Uh, oh, that was a me dumb, partially. The me got him. The, the me dumb was I, I um I, I added conduits over here and I forgot that I split the lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, we we are very quickly running into our power throughput problems. We are. Yeah. So. So that's fun. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, th I think the the cable upgrading should probably not happen while we're trying to make things happen. Yeah, I made the conduits, and I'm like, you know, I probably don't want to interfere with us doing anything else for the rest of the night. So Right, otherwise, yeah, we were going to have all hands on deck doing that, and if we had, yeah. didn't make enough, then we got to make sure to power the machine that runs all those things needed to make the components first. So right. We... right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a never-ending... It's a never-ending mess. Yeah, but it'll be solved by Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, so that's fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Stop worrying about it. Um, okay, so that's a thing. Here, let's uh, tack on a couple. Oh, I can't even do that one. Yeah. I have the fluid conduit or the fluid phase there. All right, that's a minor issue. Okay. Just causing problems, causing and solving problems all at the same time. All right, let's go back to what I was doing. So this is my number two. This is the that. This is the that. Um, okay, so we needed the machine hull. We need four tungsten gears. Tungsten gears. All right, and then we need the EV machine hull. And we need these. Now, are my gears set up correctly to automate? They are doing. They're just kind of slow. Because the tungsten gears are an HV recipe at 45 seconds. So it's going to have down to 23-ish seconds, give or take. So that's just, that's just a slow craft. I could have done it with the um, alloy smelter or the fluid. The fluid solidifier would have been the fastest option here. Um, but for ease of use, the extruder was the easiest one to set up. But if we end up needing them in quantity, this might have to switch. Uh, and that's happening up here. Because it also doesn't have any power. <laughs> Oh dear, all right. How, how are we now to the point where we're, we're running out of power on a single machine's usage? How is that a thing? And that one actually does have two faces on it. Oh dear. That, oh, well that's why, okay. So this is, um, let's look at the power requirements on this. So this is um, 240, 240 EU per tick for an HV recipe? No, that can't be right. Cause that's only a thousand RF a tick for the four to one conversion. That should not be slowing down the way it is. What the hell? All right. We're still reaching some serious power throughput problems. Yeah, we are. A single advanced extruder doesn't have enough power to make a single tungsten gear 
because it, it's burning yeah. all of the available power. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I see. Which is interesting, though, if you look at the the capacitor bank, everything looks fine. Unless this thing is just broken. Maybe. Unless, do you... I'm getting all these conduits. Um, do, you, I got. do you know... Hang on. Uh, could this be a problem where you've got some cabling going through the reactor at a different rate than what we've got over there? What do you mean? Like, if de depending on where all the cables are, are being passed through and feeding through, we might end up with like a situation where we've got like a single connector going between the capacitor at the reactor versus the capacitor over at the dynamos and not everything is feeding with multiple phases where it should uh, be it yeah if you come over here and you gotta do a little sneaky uh warp through really yeah seriously yeah okay but yeah so inputs on the bottom of the capacitor here and then the outputs on the side here so it's the whole line. Several faces, okay. Yep. That this is this is the hiding cable problem I was talking about. And not wanting to hide everything. Because it makes it damn near impossible for someone who didn't build it to identify what the problems might be. Well. It's uh yeah, it's all like this line here is the one that runs to the that you see in the like the the ceiling of the dynamo room. That's what this wire here is. All right. So it's it's connected to all of it. It is entirely possible that that capacitor out there, because it is plugged into the reactor's capacitor, that it says IO0 because it is outputting exactly as much as it's inputting. Oh, right, that is possible. Um, uh, all, I, all I can say for certainty is this extruder cannot actually process to make me the gears that I need. Right. Because it does not have the power, and it's got yeah. two input faces on it already, so... And the EBFs aren't running because they they are starved of energy, right? As well, so. All right. So let me stop this uh, tungsten gear thing because that's probably caused more problems than it's solving. I can't stop it. I I can't I can't stop it without breaking it. Because it's it's stuck attempting to cook the recipe. It's already grabbed the ingots. It's already doing its thing. All right, cool. Uh, let me disconnect it from power for the moment. Just stop trying. Stop. Get some help. Oh, it's it's going, Safi. How you doing? All right, so this machine is no longer going to run until it gets power. Uh, do we have anything? What the hell is even burning all our power? Oh, that's the other thing that I wasn't really certain about. Or, because I had put in the tantalum ore. Uh So we currently do not have enough power to process ore and then also use ore at the same time. 
which is a problem. All right, well, tell you what. Uh, let's... Do we, let's... Do we need to stop anyway and do the Signalum Cables? Because we don't have an option at this point. We do. All right, I got three stacks of them in my pocket. There's a couple more in there. All right. Um, I'm going to run the wire from the capacitor to the ME system. All right. That way that gets powered first. And then, yeah, anywhere, anywhere you see, okay, also, anywhere you see a dracon or a end seal cable, replace it, obviously. Yeah. And anywhere you find a P2P, replace it. I know, it. I know, I was thinking about that too. So that way we can just have this whole line of outputs just, you know, straight in. Yeah. So. I, I know more power is a problem. All right. And here we go. Here's hoping... Well, if I get the P2P plugged in first, or the ME system, then we'll be able to make more, I think. It'll be fine. Yeah, my, my first one is doing the wires that are going straight to the conduit makers. Perfect. Good idea. Uh, so... I don't even know where half of the scrap goes. More power is needed. Alright, let's uh... This is not necessary anymore. Because that was that was getting power from P2P and we now have it plugged in, so that's not necessary anymore. Um, all right. seeing these going orange. It's been a long time since they've been white. Okay, so this comes down this way. I'm not going to connect them just yet, but we've got the line there. So this is the ME network that he's doing right now. This line, I think he said, goes to the reactor, so this can be untouched for the moment. This is all internal white, so this is fine. Ah, cables. put power up here, so that's fine. Put power here, and here, and here. Well, this is going to be a fun journey. Nope, that's not the right cable. Thank you. 
Ooh, nice blade. Very nice. Needed, should it? Okay, let's uh, let's undo some of that. That shouldn't be needed because we're feeding it on a single face here. So let's uh, let's kill that. Okay, that should be good. You go there. I'm doing the EBS right now. Right. I'm, I'm working on the various machinery in the main room, or the main building. Okay. Fine. I think he was just tapping off whatever we had. Okay. That's good. Oh, good. No lines cutting through. This is bad. That's bad. Let's clean this up a little bit as well. Here, right. Oh, can we even? Oh, dear. Oh, no. We can. This is good. So the auto crafting on this is to wires. So I need to go wire up my wire room fast. So that's what those are gonna go towards. I just realized to auto craft more signalum conduits, we need wires, so I need to go run 
wire up my wire room ASAP. Oh shoot, yeah, you're right. That's, that's this. Oh god, okay. Is that all? Is that all good? I think, it, I think it's good. Pretty sure I did the down and the up, so we're good there. I can wire up the rest of this later. The wire is the the critical piece. Then I just need to get the entire line done. Ah, oh, damn. God, it's really hard to see if I've actually done it. We're going from underneath. More signal and conduits. Now, where's the quickest path to power? Quickest path to power, I think it's coming from down there, right? Yes, perfect. Okay. Okay. So that's done. That little path is done, so we've got wires hooked up. All right, good. The EBS are running. That's good. Good, good. You're all chunking away. So this wall is all on power from over here, which is good. And it all appears to be crunching away. This is all done up here. This line is done. Goes that away. Uh, this line is done here. Uh, I think this line still needs to get done. Conduit binder is not automated. I think we have conduit binder. We have it on auto self craft. I do believe. But we don't have it on request craft. Okay, that'll be a thing we'll have to fix at some point. Maybe. I don't know. It's 
it's not often that we run through and make thousands of conduits, so it's probably not a huge deal. But something we'll need to tackle at some point. Alright. Okay, so that's all of my current ones. And that actually happens to be enough for this whole floor. This whole floor is done. I'm pretty sure this whole floor is done. Moderately positive. Main floor. So main floor is done. Yep. Uh, we have some here that need to be did. There. Uh, you know what? Let's uh, let's disconnect that for the moment because I don't remember exactly how that was powered. Pretty sure it was powered in such a way that uh, it did not require a connection to the main network. I think that's the part that we're missing here. It's how this was all hooked up. problem will end it. So I say after this yeah. well I mean this will run us for a little while. Yeah. But uh, looking at the recipes for the draconium conduits and the draconium super conduits. Yeah. Uh, we should just skip the draconium ones as well. Probably a good idea. Because that that to get to the superconductor you're just uh, chemical reacting the draconic wire in nether li liquid nether star, which oh, that's easy. That's easy enough, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm good. Let's give it another round. some random holes in these cables that I'm not clear on. It might have been remnants of old systems or something. Probably like a re-ran a wire or who knows. Maybe. Our, our conduit binder is not keeping up with our needs. Did you know that you can just right click onto the conduit with the new one and it replaces it in place? Did, did you not know that? No, I did not know that. Oh. I was then, sitting here then yes. picking them all up like a buffoon. Oh no, so that might explain one of the disconnects I'm seeing. You Could might be. have accidentally disconnected something. Yep, that's probably it. Oh, 
Well, here's hoping me fixing that isn't causing other problems. The, the one concern I had was um, over here. Um, oh, yeah? Where we had uh, the, uh, the pulsating clay or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought we had that on a separate power line. But by the time I fixed what I thought was missing, it looks like it's connected to the main network again. So okay. I don't know if that needs to be readdressed. Nah. It's fine. Okay. It'll be fine. I'm sure it will. Okay. Uh, white, 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 white. No more white cables going that away. We do have P2Ps over here. So this is the thing I was literally pointing out earlier that we're gonna have to fix. So let's fix it. Um, fix it. Uh, it's gonna require some creative rewiring for some of these cable things, but it'll be fine. So let's grab some ME conduit. Power. Power. Uh, and then we need conduit going that way. So theoretically, I could run the power through the ceiling instead. But that feels like that's a gross misuse of cables at this point, so I'm okay patching it up like that for now. Uh, this one's fine. This one's not fine, but we don't have power all the way over here. Hmm. Yeah, we have some power over here. Ooh, I got. Yeah, I got to rewire the uh, ore processor. Yes, you do. Alrighty, let's do it. We need more conduit binder. You wanna you wanna cook up a huge batch of conduit binder powder and just throw it in their mass smelter thingy that you got over at the ore processing? Oh, that's a good that's a good idea. Well, no, because it's not powered. Uh, prioritize that. <laughs> How many cables do you have in your pocket? I have I mean, we have two stacks in the network and I have seventeen on me. Oh, okay. Then yeah, I'll go plug that in right now. Okay. I only had 23, and that's not enough to get down there. <laughs> no, not at all. Oh, okay. So we are now kind of in a hurry up and wait method. As soon as he gets that thing set up, we'll have infinite conduit binders, basically. Um, but until that happens, we're currently waiting on conduit binder to be able to make more conduits. Stack of conduits is 100 and something conduit binder. It just takes more effort. Let's check our Lumium. And Signalum, we're fine. I don't think we're even using them faster than we're currently producing those ingots, which is good. Anything I can do to help set that up over there to get the uh, conduit binder going faster? Because I can't do anything at the moment. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I'm just going to be clicking. Just, just be clicking. Where, where it's is the, that mass? It's the ABC, man. Always be clicking. Where's the what? Uh, the the mass uh, smelter. That was. It's on the second floor. Yeah. In the chicken house. Which way are you gonna be coming from, so I can get that wire done as fast as possible? Ah, I see it down there. Okay. Conduits. Some. Give me some. Alright, so 
So let's do some uh, conduit binder. A lot of it. Uh, input bus here. Nice. And set of power. Well, you know, it, it helped. It helped. Alright, I used up whatever was in the buffer of the mass burner thing, the multi smelter, to make as much conduit binder as I could so we can make more cables. Nice. Have an egg. Uh, That's got, plugged in. No, it, yeah, it's this is plugged in specifically. Um, it is not Wait. plugged in. I I missed one somewhere. Please hold. Okay. Okay. I think I see it down Don't there. I see it too. All right. There, how about now? Done. Good. Okay. Uh, you you work on this room then. I'm gonna go back to uh, everything else. All right. The thing that worries me is I have one item conduit in my pocket, so I broke something somewhere. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh. uh oh. And that must have been earlier on, because you had learned about the the right click by then. So, uh, yeah. where were you working? Uh, I'll go back and check. Okay. Okay. So let's let's go back to doing more of these. Um, I do believe under here is a problem. So let's uh, let's try to solve under here because this is where all of our materials are coming from. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do this. have a p2p here and this is the p2p that I identified as a problem earlier I think we've got I think we've got enough spare cabling to be able to do this uh, in fact let's just tap in from here this will be fine okay that's that's tapped and then we just need a conduit there Fine. Alright. So that's that's done. These need to be done. easier to work with uh, and then you are just a clusterfuck of cables all right burb one sec okay can we can we unclusterfuck this cable
only kinda. We can only kinda unclusterfuck this cable. It's fine. It's unclusterfucked enough. That'll do. And then you are powered that away. You're all good. You're all good. Man, we got the we got quite quite the mess going on here. You're good. Shouldn't be anything in here. You're good. Hey Gila, what you doing? What you doing? Gila's rubbing his face on my mic stand. Or my, my uh, camera stand, so if you see my face start wiggling, that's Gila's fault. Good kitty. Good kitty. Alright, so let's check the next floor down. He said he was doing the EBFs, so I think he's already done some of it. Let's get the lab block to cover this. Large tile, large tile lab block. Okay, so we are orange across the board under here. I'm fairly positive. I can't see and I can't navigate, but I'm pretty sure. Yep, that looks like orange everywhere. Orange everywhere. Yep. Good, good. Oops. Oh, oh. There we go. Okay. Um, and then this was also orange because he did these. So we're, it's not done being built. Hey, you know what? Let's take a little side trip. Because I'm here and I have them. Oh, what was that? I, I was checking the wires around my EBFs and I decided to put the coils down that I built earlier. Ah. So I got them in my pocket now. Okay, so all of these need to be open, like so. So that's formed. Good, good. Okay. Formed. Oh, can I not math? I can't math, apparently. Oh, I... Either I can't math or I I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> I think it's a combination of both of those things. Um, so I need like twice the amount of coils. I don't know why I didn't math that correctly. I'm sure if we were to replay what was happening earlier, I'm sure my math was just wrong. Um, but it looks like I did exactly half of what I should have done. So I need 33 more coils. Whoopsie doodle. It's fine. It's fine. Work in progress. Ah, we need over here. Power. Over here. I see. Well, he's removed all of the power cabling from in here. Uh, so it's now all underneath. So I think I'm just going to have to deal with that. And we're going to have to power cable underneath.
Okay, closest is over here. Okay. So, how's about take a brief step back into the machine room? Um, we have no power. So, even if I put all these doodads in here, uh, we're not going to have enough to do the thing. Also, I don't have the gears because of this problem. So, let's see if we can solve that problem quick. Necessary. So my gears got finished. Uh, tungsten gears. Tungsten gears. Alright, so that's chunking away. Uh, let's finish some of these things. Hi Midnight, how you doing? Uh, Paige, how is that the thickest ore? I am, I am curious what your, what your measurement is. talking about the quantity of elements listed I'm I'm moderately sure I've seen a bigger one but I couldn't begin to remember which one of these are all single elements um, the gemstones definitely are uh, full of minerals 
And it might not be the ores specifically that I saw something bigger. But uh, something had just a stupid amount of materials in it. Yeah, the garnet sand is is pretty beefy. Oh, uh... Or drill. Or drill. Sick. Yeah. Maybe we can get some phosphorus from that too. Uh, maybe. Solid, Cause, maybe. Because there's tricalcium phosphate down in the uh, underground. Oh, nice. So. I still gotta finish putting together all the pieces, but it's all minimal pieces. The only difficult part was the drilling plant itself, so. Then we gotta figure out where to put it and how to power it. Or what? We gotta figure out where to put it and how to power it. Uh, you got that. We got the, uh... The dimensional transceiver. Oh, yeah. I forgot about those. How you doing, Midnight? How's it going tonight? Conduits, all of the conduits. need to go down a step finish powering this thing I think the whole thing is upgraded now maybe almost almost where just, isn't it? I just finished my machine room I finished oh, okay. I finished all of the main building um, I think oh, I gotta do the reactors yeah, you gotta do the reactors, um, and I gotta. I'm gonna finish the uh, the power cables to the distillery stuff. Oh right, yeah, the distillery. Hello, kitty. How you doing, kitty? Those are all done. Hi, kitty. What's up, kitty? How you doing, kitty? So loud, kitty. So loud. You had a bad nap. That's not good. Hey. Come here. Stop yelling. Stop yelling. <laughs> kitty. Calm yourself. Oh, I see what it is. I I see. I see. This is a standard practice for him. He got his foot wet drinking out of the water. He comes to me and yells at me when his foot's wet so I can dry it off for him. <laughs> He's such a dork. So I have a towel next to me at all times now because I am. <laughs> I know, right? It's kind of adorable. It's kind of obnoxious because he comes in screaming like a freaking wrecking ball, but it's adorable. I'm good, kitty.
Oh, that was a sad kitty noise. No sad kitty noises. Only only happy kitty noises. Only happy kitty noises, please. Come here. Come here. Come here. I flopped the kitty. It flopped. Oh, you know what? I haven't shown this one off yet. It's been sitting next to me for a little while. This came in the mail. The Derpy Puffer Fish from Raft. They did a plush of it. And I love it. It's adorable. Look at that face. Look at that Derpy face. And then I also got... I've shown this at least once or twice. I got the lamb. I got I got the lamb, and he has a little jingle. Praise the lamb. So yeah, those are my my two new acquisitions. All right, where am I going? I'm going over here. Don't you hate it when you're warping around with your sword and you end up inside of a distillery? Uh, I don't think that's happened to me yet, but I would hate it. You're right. Yeah, it's it, it's a it's an experience. I wouldn't recommend. But I wonder if you take damage if you warp inside an EBF while it's on. I mm, maybe. Test it out. Um, there's only one square space in there. It wouldn't do it. No, there's two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah there's two. Okay. Yeah. Alright. You. Power. More conduits, please. Hi, Caddy. Ah, fire. I don't even know where that goes. Okay, that's all hooked up again. Where do you go? So you removed all the P2Ps, right? Any that I was finding as I was going, yes. Uh, let's see, this has... So one of them still says it has one output. And that's only, yeah, only one of them says it has one output. So there's one lurking somewhere. Alright. Um, so I found a line that didn't have a complete power cable to it. So I replaced what was there, and there's a disconnect between up and down. I think it's part of your uh, reactor setup, so I don't know if it's a, an intentional disconnect or not. Are you... Standing there now? I am floating here. Floating here. Uh... Ball pit coming Friday and or Saturday. Oh, that up and down. Yeah, leave that. This one, you mean? This vertical line? Uh, that, yeah, the vertical yeah, line of leave the that disconnected. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Please. so that was the original line that I had to plug the reactor into the whole network. Okay. But then I decided to reroute it so that way everything goes through that that one power room, yes. otherwise they were being used, like, imbalanced. Got it, okay. So. Got it. Yep. And this one I just gotta do. Oh. Not powered? Powered. Powered, not powered. Powered now. 
wasn't powered before. That one all plugged in? Uh, plugged in up to here, but you've got uh, this random yeah, thing. Yeah, I just yeah, I just did that one. This okay. is just for more space if we decide we need more centrifuges or got whatever. It, okay. okay, good. I think, think we're done. I think we're done. I don't know how long that took, but it was a, a while. A, a while. Um, all right. I did do a little bit of streamlining cables as I was going in the main house, at least. Um, especially as I was removing some of the P2Ps. Uh, some of those needed some serious rework of cables, so I did some of that. We never did find that last P2P, though, did we? No, I was looking for it, but then you started asking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I think we're done. Everything's running. I got my... I got my power back in my machine room, and I got the, the gears that I needed to make the, the drill thing, so that's good. So yeah, we just needed a, a power throughput upgrade. I don't know how we suddenly hit a tipping point of not being able to run power for anything, but whatever. Yeah, it, that was, that was kind of strange. Kind of makes me wonder if there's a power line going through an area that's not chunk loaded or something. Maybe. But I don't think so. Well, and chunk loading shouldn't matter because as long as we're logged in, the chunks that within a radius around us should all be loaded. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. No, but now we no, have no. eight times the throughput, or eight times the output per connection. We do, and that's wonderful. So. Yeah, it was fun uh, replugging everything in and all the machines just kicking on around me as I've been plugging stuff in. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see if we can find that P2P. P. I'm pretty sure this was already tackled. Oops, missed. Uh, that's fine. That was tackled. I'm pretty sure I did all the P2Ps over here. These are all running off of network power. There was a P2P over here that I removed. This one doesn't have one. This one's been changed. No PPs there. Direct power connection. Direct power connection. Uh, no, Paige, I did not order 6,000 ping pong balls. Unfortunately, 6,000 ping pong balls was kind of outside of my price range. So I settled for regular ball pit balls. Oh, Paige and Demos, your colors are the same when I'm looking over there. Demos. Demos said that. And no, Demos, I did not. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. The joys of making those small mistakes on stream, they are never forgotten. <laughs> but oh well. You're, you're good. Where else do we have P2P? You don't have any P2P in here, right? Pretty sure he just redid this room and it's using normal power. Yeah, everything's normal in here. This is a new setup, so he would have used normal power. Normal. 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 All of the normal. Found it. Oh, yeah? My rocket setup. Oh, uh, rocket fuel. No, no, the rocket pad. Uh, the rocket Oh, the rocket itself. pad itself. Yeah. Oh. Did you just break it? 
Yeah. Still says that there's one output. Uh, give it a sec. ME tends to be a little bit slow in the uptake. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a way to upgrade this. Uh, kill that. Power. Not that we actually need this setup anymore. Because we're not planning on going to space anymore. But, you know. Been nice to have. Uh, so let's do cable. Export. Rocket fuel. Conduit. Kind of jank. Kind of real jank, but actually, less jank. Let's do let's do less jank. Cable. Terminal. Export. Rocket fuel. Up. There we go. Less jank. Uh, no, Knight, I have not adopted the streamer never makes mistakes policies. Because I am, I am full of mistake. All of the mistake. Interesting, it still says one output. Yeah, and it's the... Yeah, I don't know which one that is. I mean, wait, oh, one, wait. one way to solve that problem is to disconnect it and then see what stops working. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the old squeaky wheel, or the scream test uh -huh, kind of uh -huh. thing. Yeah. That's why I keep suggesting to figure out who wants to fund our application network. <laughs> yup. That has been suggested several times over the years. Yeah. No one wants to pull that trigger, unfortunately. I know, it's so dumb. <laughs> like, ah, well, well, you want to know who should pay for it. Right, and if no Turn one's it jumping off and up. See who screams the loudest. Right, and if they're the ones that scream the loudest and use it the most, then they're the ones that should be paying for it. Exactly. Yeah. The thingy has been did, indeed. And I shall hydrate, thank you, Knight. Okay, so now that we're like several projects deep at this point, um, I do need another 33 of these. So let's go do another 33 of these. Uh, I do believe the number was 264. So let's go do that. Uh, so we need 264 of tungsten steel wires. And then we need uh, 264 of the vanadium steel foil. We need 33 nichrome ingots. A tank to put it all in. Oh dear, what did I do this time? Yeah, I'm just gonna turn that thing off and we'll see what happens. Fair enough. So keep an eye on something not running. Watch us never notice it again and never have an answer to that. Wouldn't that be interesting? I mean, it'd be amusing, at least. We'll, we'll be, like, another 80 hours into this pack and be like, did we ever figure that P2P thing out? <laughs> yeah.
auto crafting it it does feel like auto crafting is a ways away and in fairness it kind of is but the slog to get to auto crafting um it, it it does the usual thing that auto crafting does and speeds up from there pretty drastically but yes passive auto crafting to a supply can be done fairly quickly but AE auto crafting is a different ball game altogether. All right, uh, extract door, extract the door. Um, yeah, AE specific auto crafting can be a slog to get to, um, but you could do. I mean, depending on if it's available at your tech level, I don't remember for sure. Um, there is the Andryo Crafter, which lets you do things like that. But yeah, there's there's no easy way to do anything in this pack. Let's just start. Splitting it out. And then we need to go over here. Take out your two. Put in a put in a bucket, put in a stack. Put in a bucket, put in a stack, put in a bucket, put in a stack, put in a bucket, put in a stack, put in a tank, put in a tiny stack. So let all those things cook. That's gonna finish off the EBFs. And while that's going, let's work on all the pieces that we need for the the miner to drilling plant thing. So we need 15 steel frame boxes. Steel frame box, 15. Perfect. We need eight solid steel machine casings. Eight solid steel machine casings. Um, and then we need energy hatch, input hatch, output bus, energy, energy hatch, input hatch, output bus. And let's see, let's do, maybe HV will be fine. It doesn't really say what power it, it does say what power it needs. It needs EV. Okay, so we need EV. I could do a pair of HVs for an EV, but let's just do two EVs. So, our method of auto crafting to supply right now is uh, a bit excessive. Um, so, I'm sure you've seen. <laughs> wherever the fuck it is. Um, I'm sure you've seen the LV wall. This is my. This is our first, like, serious um, auto craft to supply. Where we have this entire wall auto crafting to uh, this wall that gets filled up and stops those machines as they fill up. And then secondary auto craft to supply. And then I don't even remember where else we went from there, but the next form of it is machine room. 
this is the next form of autocraft to supply using the ME system to autocraft to supply two drawers that we just need to configure which items we want to autocraft to supply. So this will take anything that is autocraftable in the network as long as you configure an export bus for it and slap it in a drawer wall it will autocraft to supply. Um, this this is the final, I think, possibly the final form of it. It just needs to be configured from there. Um, yeah, this is a this is quite the quite the monster that I just finished setting up. Howdy, kinder. How's it going? Alright, so there's my two EV energy hatches. I've got my input, my output. All of these things. I have an egg. One of these days a chicken's gonna hatch out of that and the, the nightmare will begin inside. Um, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, you're getting through, getting through Twin Peaks. Nice. Uh, we do need an EV converter, 16 amp, por favor. I need some uh, Draconic cables. Alright, let's see where we're at over here. Uh, we're at we're at fluid level problems. Okay, so let's take you and slap a you in here. Take you, slap a you in here. Take you. Yeah, we're gonna need the uh, that new clean room before too terribly long. Gotcha. I mean, I think we'll probably be okay here tonight, but a lot of these circuits and wafers and things require a clean room, and this one is full. I see. All right, all right. Um, okay. I guess you want a weekend project or whatever. Okay. Or a project for now, whatever you feel like. Well, my current project is getting the uh, the ore driller set up. That's a better project. And as soon as I'm done with that, I don't have any plans, so clean room can be next. Nice. Okay, so I got my energy converter. I got my cables. I've got the this stuff. I need an ender chest. Uh, oh, hang on. Before I go too far with this. I remember it saying a thing. And this is where these basic plants like this don't have recipes. They don't tell you what they do. But I do remember something along the lines of a fluid needed. Uh, so let's reread that. Uh, drilling fluid. So let's see if drilling fluid is something that is remotely even close to automatable. Drilling fluid. Stone dust, lubricant, and water. Ah, well that's, that's not bad at all. Yes, that is correct. Um, we have one. Right here. This is our clean room. Um, but we are running tight on space in here. See? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so it, it's, a, it's a little tight in here. It's a little tight in here. Um, what was the max size again? 15, 15? 15, 15, 15. Okay. Yeah. Do you need the, the whole height? Ceiling, the whole ceiling except for the center has to be these uh, filter casings. Okay. Um, center has to be the 
Do you need height? Like, do you want multiple floors to work with? Sure, yeah, we can go height. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. Um, mentally thinking. It's going to take some effort, but we'll get there. Yep. So I'm thinking this section right here will be fine. Uh, pine. Yeah. How, how do you how do you think I'm gonna come up here for placement for a sec? I mean, I'm not there yet, but you know, pre-planning. I'm thinking this segment from here to here, and then two floors. Unless you want three floors. Um, two floors can s certainly work. Yeah. Okay. Because these, each of these floors are, what, four or five high? Yeah, I don't think you need, like, an actual floor inside the thing. No, you don't, but, I mean, if you're thinking of a big clean room, that's probably no, going right, to expand. Right, but I mean, like, when you build it, like, don't worry about actually putting floors inside of it. No, like, no, I was thinking more of um, make the big square, and then when you need to expand out, you can build your own floors within there for, for mm. a place and stuff. Um... Because then you can have a multi-floor. So, so you'll take, like, the back half here, is that what you're saying? Uh, no, the whole thing. The whole the whole two floors? Oh, no. so I'm thinking, like, from here Yeah. to here. Oh, yeah, okay, that's what I was saying, yeah, the back here. half. I forgot this is technically two buildings. Yeah, technically. So, yes, that I think that will work. Uh, unless we want the front half. No, I, I mean, the back's fine. I just, yeah, because I was going to use this floor for the new DML stuff. And ah. then on the okay, spot, I think for like the multi-block resonant clay stuff. So I think I'll probably do that uh, up, up the floor. Yep. Okay. Yeah, right there. So I think that'll work out fine. Okay. All right. That's the, that's the tentative plan. Just need to somehow build it. Good luck. Um, It'll be easier for you than it was for me because we have... So much more automation, yes. Polyethylene. <laughs> also that. All right. Um, I need I need to make a drilling fluid setup. Uh, I need we need, we need to do that. We need a tank. T tank tank. Mixer. jumps. Pine jumps a lot. That's amazing. How do, how do I... Is there a way to go back from the leaderboard? <laughs> Alright, uh, time played. Pine spends a lot of time in this game. So, uh, Pine. Yeah. Uh, Blade, Blade had me check a thing. Uh-huh. Time played. Oh, yeah? Me, 166 hours. That's a lot. You, 312. I AFK in here a lot. Damn near double the amount of time played. <laughs> <laughs> Plus building that that room over there took a, took a while. I mean, Door stuff. I but, spent a good chunk of time yeah. building that machine room off stream. So, well, like I said, like I think there was one night where I just AFK'd like overnight. Probably fair, but still. But yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. We've died exactly one time each. Yeah, and uh, who killed me for mine? It doesn't say. Strange. Hmm. Weird. Hmm. But how did you die? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember dying. I don't remember you dying either. I don't. I don't think I've got a uh, a death. Uh, sheet either. So I don't know when that happened. Huh. Wild. Huh. Curious. Alright, uh, so we've got the super tank. We need a fluid storage bus 
for storing the tank. We need some conduits and some cables. We need all sorts of stuff. Put that circuit back. All right, so first things first, let's go set up the super tank so it can store the things. Right back in the in the dark corner here is fine. All right, super tank. Store it. Screw it. Cable it. Filter it. Lock it. Pop it. Twist it. Etc. Uh, actually, this needs to go this way. To stick with the theme. Too far? Too far. Alright, that'll do. So this is the drilling fluid. Let's go ahead and sign that as well. All right. So we got a spot for drilling fluid. Now we got to make the drilling fluid. I don't know exactly where that's going to happen. Um, Let's do it in the ore processing, because uh, down here is kind of a spot for some miscellaneous machinery. And I think drilling fluid counts fairly well as miscellaneous machinery. All right, so what do we need? We need to figure out where you wanted to put the um, ore drilling. No, not power. yet. Um, I actually got um, I got sidetracked with making the drilling fluid, so we can actually drill. Because because drilling. Mm -hmm requires drilling fluid so we need that uh, so stone dust I need lube we got we got lubricant in the network right oh yeah so fluid exports fluid export I think we can do a capacity card We don't have capacity cards on AutoCraft. Let's fix that. What's up, Paige? You found the Ender in a blacksmith in a blacksmith chest. Good, good. Those are a lovely find. Unfortunately, you can run out of power in them, but still, they are very wonderful. Uh, what was I doing? Capacity card. Capacity card is any sort of. It'll be fine. Let's actually change it to regular service. It will take any service, but I want it to prefer the regular. All right, so that's good. That's good. Uh, you can recharge it. 
Um, you do need a machine for that. Um, I do believe you can pop it down here to recharge. At, like the bottom center slot in any of the machines. But I don't know for sure if that works. And I know it works for other RF devices, so probably yes, but I haven't tested it specifically with a sword. It did charge. Wonderful. Um, check your enhancements on it, though, because the Ender Sword itself can be crafted fairly easily, but enhancing it with all the, the blue, the light blue stuff down there, those tend to come at random in a box, and those can be a little bit more challenging to upgrade a basic built sword. So it's still good to find these, for sure, because they tend to come with travel, they tend to come with empowered couple levels, something like that. They're still good. Because then you can shift right click to teleport all over the place, and it's fun. Uh, over here. Okay, capacity cart. Capacity cart. So we need water. lubricant. Uh, you know what? Since we got a capacity card in here, let's do acceleration cards for the rest of it. Just so it can go faster. Go faster. Go faster. Alright, so we got stone dust. Let's do... A stack of stone dust to have it prepared. Alright. Alright, so you're doing the fluid exports to there. Uh, I think I can just wrap down and do a fluid import probably. So the thing we need is a robot arm. Robot arm. Then we need a screwdriver. Then we need a fluid filter. Okay. Robot arm. Screwdriver. Fluid filter. Not a robot arm. Pump. Dumb. Uh, crowbar. And pump. Pump. Screwdriver. Fluid filter. No, I'm dumb again. Jesus Christ. What's wrong with me right now? What's going on with my brain? <laughs> All right. So I need to make, well, actually, well, well, no, nah, I'll do it. It's fine. B -b -b I need to make the ferrite mixture. Ah. So I need at least one macerator and well, what things are you macerating here? Um, PS4. those are all planned to be for these three mixers that are going to be like all, all the items that are in there. You can see. Titanium needs to be macerated. Uh, vanadium needs to be macerated. Invar needs to be macerated. Oh, okay, got uh, it. Yeah. So all, so all none of these... None of them are zinc, is what you're saying. None of them are zinc, no. Do we not already have zinc somewhere? No, no not enough. down here. All right. Stone dust. Filter. Stone dust. Uh, supply, keep, keep exact. Additionally, did you finish any of the EBS downstairs or no? There's a couple of them finished. They're not set up though. Um, I'm working okay. on the last bit of coils that I need. I miscounted earlier. 
and then I was going to go down and set them up, but since I don't have any of the ores that I was planning on cooking in the ED EBFs, I didn't have any inspiration to continue with that. That's fair. It's just, yeah, the ferrite mixture needs one, so... Okay. Um, my coil should be about done. Well, I'm, I'm going to set up the production of it first. Okay. Then I will do that next. Alright, what what am I missing? Import. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so fluid. Drill in fluid. Lots of it. Wonderful. Okay, so that's done. Drilling fluid get. I do not remember what the code is for our diamond power. We don't need diamond power. We need um, dimensional transceiver. Dimensional transceiver. Sure, we'll set that to autocraft. Why not? I don't know if we have all the components for it, but sure, why not? There. Can we? We are missing the ender crystal. Okay. What does the ender crystal take to make? Ah. I see. I see. Uh, okay, so let's, uh... Let's soul bind some enderman heads. We have soul vials on autocraft, but let's do that. We do not. Perfect. All right. So soul vials on autocraft. We need vibrant crystals. Are those on autocraft? They are not, but they are being produced. Do you have vibrant crystals set up to um, autocraft? No, that was one. The vibrant and the pulsating crystals were another another thing I was going to do in this room. Got it. Okay, but haven't gotten to it yet. Poopies. Okay, so we're gonna have to do this by hand for the moment. Um, but we got we got some of the auto crafting done. All right, we'll just put these in here. I'm just to the point of automating everything as I find I need it, so... Yep, that's what I do. <laughs> so I was going to make a dimensional transceiver, so I automated the dimensional transceiver, and then we find out that we need the ender crystals, so then I automated soul vials with enderman heads in them, and then I realized that we needed the vibrant crystal to make that into an ender crystal, so... Sure do. Yep. It's just an autoclave. Auto? Autoclave? Soulbinder. Autoclave, uh, autoclave for the vibrant crystal. Got it. Yep. And the pulsating crystal as well. So we'll need two autoclaves. But yeah, and then two extractors: one for the vibrant alloy and one for the pulsating alloy, or the pulsating iron. Right. So yeah. Well, I'm just going to make up a, a small handful of uh, dimensional transceivers then, just to, to have them. Good idea. As soon as I can find where the soul binder is. There we are. Right, it uses XP. Oh. oh uh, there's an XP obelisk that you can grab, or you can extract, or something, I think, the overworldian matter. In right. the XP, and no, it's just it's just the that over. extracting uh, or automating anything that requires experience is pain in the ass. Well, that's why you use the liquid XP. Right. Yeah. But that liquid XP would require some form of automated XP collection, rather than relying on us putting our XP in the network. 
Um, so what you can do... Ah, extract or... You with extract the overworld, the overworld of matter, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what I was... Yeah. Got it. So that's eight of the Ender Crystals. Are these even used for anything else? Eventually, yes. We will need those. Um, make sure that you have the uh, ender crystals on your automated list for that crystal area. Yeah. We're going to need that. You're going to need a lot of that. Well, that one goes through the soul binder. Yep. Yeah. We're going to need a lot of that. The uh, ground up end crystals go into Nequadria. One of the <laughs> next tier I ores. beg your pardon. Yep. Oh. Yep. Grains of the end, grains of vibrancy, grains of uh, prescience, and naquada dust. Plus liquid endurium, curium and curium. liquid endirium. Yep. Sweet Jesus. Uh huh. <laughs> what is Nequadria good for? Besides, it's it's one of the highly used next tier metals. It's, it came up a lot in my, uh, my well, part the identification. Well, Naquada is different than the Quadria. I know. I know. Both of them. Naquadria is the next tier up from Naquada, and they are both highly used often. Also, um, Enriched Naquada is another one. Pretty much all of the high tier metals that we're going to be working our way into are all highly used. So, okay, well, on the yeah. plus side, making the Nequadria ingus requires uh, zero point energy. So we're not there sure. yet. We're not there <laughs> just yet. All right, so and trinium coils. So. Right. Okay. Which so, I'm trinium. pretty sure, yeah. Tri oh, tri those are the second highest tier coils. Yeah, we're right. we're a ways out. All right, so this dimensional transceiver is just power. Um, I might move this. I mean, it doesn't need to be moved, but I might move it anyway just to have it in the power room. Uh, power room. Because that's be that'd be a fine place for it, just to have it on on this wall, like maybe right there. Um, so let's let's do that just for the hell of it. You come with me. Okay, so that's that's a thing, um, and if we really wanted to jazz it up a little bit, uh, we can make sure that it's got conduits on all sides to make it to make it input and output faster. All right, uh, and then I also need I need fluid. Um, drilling fluid in particular. Let's do an ender tank for that instead. I was thinking of doing it through the dimensional transceiver. Um, you know what? Kind of fuck it. Let's do it. I'm gonna do dimensional transceiver, uh, which will 
Let's let's get to fluid storage back here. We have lots of fluid. This is good. Um, I need. It would be good if I could do power. So like, if I could swap out the liquid air, for example, here, and have the dimensional transceiver here with the drilling fluid, that'd be kind of neat. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit of monkeying, but it'll be fine. All right, I'm monkeying with things. Uh oh. Like what? Don't worry about it. Well, now I'm more worried. You probably should be. Well, now I'm definitely more worried. <laughs> yup. Alright, so, drilling fluid. There. Yip, yip. Alright, and then you can be... Liquid air. Okay. Liquid air. And let me make sure that you are screwed correctly. Allow input from output side. Good. You are screwed correctly. Okay. Good. And then I did not set the priority. Okay, that's good. And then uh, priority. Then we set the dimensional transceiver down, and we can just do that any old place. But let's uh, let's put it right here. And you need a capacitor. I don't know what any of these capacitors are for. I don't know what I don't know what their level is, so we just kind of ignore them. Let's see. Let's do a compressed capacitor. That's nine capacitors. All right, and then we power it. configure a new input output uh, actually we can probably do pine power but let's do um, how many how many characters do we have oh we have plenty of characters good yeah all right drill into heaven send Uh, that's items. Well, I don't need that. Fluid. Then we need ender fluid conduits for that. Set you to extract. Okay. That should be set up so that when I get another dimensional transceiver set up wherever we're drilling, I should be able to set up for fluid and power and be done with it. Um, get another one of these. First mission, flawless. Second mission, five dead. Third mission, half injured. <laughs> 
Well, at least you, uh, at least uh, you threw the cannon the far, EBF right? quick. Alright. Yep. So with these new ones all mooshed together. Yep. Uh, Two different inputs. Theoretically. But well, there's only one input bus. Yeah. Okay, then how do we control with with levels then? Uh, you don't. Okay, so with this new setup, these things will just be made infinitely forever. Uh, so the level control. Um. Um. Forgot you had all these things set up on level control. Gross. Well, yeah, but I mean, it keeps it from just constantly making signal, for instance, which is very expensive to spin up. It would chew through all of our zinc, for instance. Right. Uh, you could you could level control the powder creation rather than controlling the level at the pushing it pushing powder into the EBF, control it at where the power is being generated. I don't think there's room in the setup for that. Well, that's because you've you've slimlined that setup to the point where it's almost impossible to identify how it's being made in the first place. I hate I hate the Greg Tech covers, by the way. They are impossible oh. to identify how something has been automated after the fact. Uh I guess. Why? Oh, because I never finished doing that. Okay. Uh, let's finish doing that quick. Alright. You're done. You have some fluid left in you. You have some item left in you. Take you out. We'll just consolidate. There we go. Okay. That's all done. So... Bop. I guess unless we, I don't know, it's just going to fill the output then and nothing else will be able to get done. Um, hmm. I was going to say we could, all the outputs for the EBFs could go into a drawer system with a connector on the, like the drawer controller, the ME network, but then it would just, it's just going to fill the, uh, fill the output bus. Once the, mm. once the drawer for it backs up. Because, I mean, ultimately, these EBFs don't necessarily need to be the sticking point for where the ingots are automated. These could all be set up to just take whatever, as long as they've got the right fluid input, and they can just cook whatever the hell's sent at them. And ultimately, that's how the big one, when we get to the big one, that one's essentially going to be that way. It's going to be like you've got the, the big ass uh, smelty furnace at the oh, yeah, processing. No, it's going to it's going to smelt right. whatever comes its way. Yeah, and that's what the, like the large chemical reactor in the processor room has. It just has right. multiple, it has four or five fluid input hatches. Oh, right. So that way, whatever goes into it uses whatever fluid it needs. So that would right. be really handy. So that's kind of what we need to adjust our mentality to anyway. I think we're right. just kind of I, I accidentally forced it to happen a little early. Yeah. Um, okay. So we could level at the dust creation level. Um, we might be able to do... So let's see. How How is your level emitting actually preventing it from making more currently like your level emitting at the EBF level how does that stop more dust from being made so the signal and dust is going into a drawer that's limited to one stack ah so and you're then, limiting at the drawer drawer level of the dust right so then once we have enough signal and this turns off the dust fills up and it stops got it and so that way, when we need the signal, then we don't have to wait for the dust to spin up because some of those dust mixings take like a minute each. Right. 
and then it just has a dust back up and then it just immediately goes into the furnace. Hmm. Can the Greg Tech machines be configured to accept control by redstone? Don't know. Let me see. Because you could level emit ingots at the dust creation. Blade says yes. It's probably cover for it, honestly. Yeah, redstone activity detector cover. Well, that gives out activity. Or, sorry, as, machine as controller redstone. turns machines on off as cover. And probably has redstone control in it. Oh, Blade's talking about machine controller. Yeah, that's the okay. Yeah, that's the on off cover, the machine controller cover. Okay. So, so that, yeah, we could just level them it right onto the on yeah. the with the current setup that I have as well. Yeah, because that way, I mean. Even even though I get where you're coming from, not wanting uh, like wanting to have the dust backed up because those take forever to cook, but the EBS take just as long to cook. They do, but the thing with that, I I mean, I guess I don't know. If, I mean, I, I do like the how slim it is. I do like the robot arms that you can limit how many things it pulls into it too, so you're not like just overloading the input with right. valuable things. Uh, that I use I use Ender IO filters for that the, the limited filter keep one right. stack in at a time yeah and that yeah. works too it's uh, not it's not quite as good for like precise control like putting x number of seven different items into the assembler or whatever but it's it's good for most purposes yeah but yeah i think you could probably work that that cover in into the system just slap it on the front and level emit from there i mean worst case we rebuild and separate these EVFs again. Yeah. Um, so then for the ones, so like if we line them all up, so here's all the ones that need nitrogen, here's all the ones that use helium, here's all the ones that use argon, whatever. Yep. So from there with the uh, the interface that's above them, we just keep putting in like the dust into there. Yep. That way it, so then a, an entire line could be a single fluid type and then the interface could just you know, Ender IO dump into all of the three different input buses, and we can just have the entire line of six just cook them all at once. Mm hmm. Yeah, that could work. And I think, and I then think we, it might be we more actually efficient. will only need those machine covers on the end result dust then as well, which will be nice. Yes. So it's only going to be like four of these that will have it. Well, yeah, for now. I want to move the energetic and vibrant alloy and the stainless steel into here as well. This mm. may as well be like the hall of dusts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I want to move those in here eventually. Okay, okay. I might be able to do that right now with just mixers. I think everything is, I think we have We've got steel, we've got, we don't have, we do have gold. No way, do we? Might no, we almost be worth re reorienting these machines so that they make sense, because they've been kind of put together as needed. But like have all the, all the base grinded metals down one spot, and then have like the, the early tier mixes like the Imbar and the Electrum and whatever in the next line or whatever. Just so we don't have to keep reading through every single drawer line to see what's in them. Right, so yeah, so how I had done it is... Yeah, these are all the the base metals here, actually. Except for the Electrum. But, but Electrum, that's because brass, we have that. red alloy, steel, annealed copper. It's, it's no longer base metals. <laughs> well, I call them base metals because we're making those ingots infinitely in oh, the other okay. system. It. That makes sense. Versus, like, this second row, which is our the Lumium, the Black Bronze, Black oh, Steel, right, Business, Sterling, Signalum. Yeah. Yeah. So all the stuff in the first row here supplies all the stuff in the second row. Right, but then so it, then it got mixed up even further when you started going into the uh, 
the Clathrates and then the, the Eye of Enders. Well, and originally I was just going to have this row be just the Clathrates. And then I'm like, well, I have space. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's fine. Once it's set up, we can just walk away. Right. And we do have gold right here. So, yeah, I think I have everything already to okay. make them just move everything or move those three over. And okay. then they'll free up space on the red floor. Nice. Or whatever we need. Mm. Mm. All right. Um. So I am. I am just about ready to go set up the drill. Sick. Um. Do we want to focus on vanadium to start? I thought it was tantalum that you wanted. All of the above. Well, I mean, see how it works. Maybe it just like grabs all ores within a radius. That would be nice. You know, something like that. I don't know if you have to program it to focus on something, but like go a little ways away where we haven't gone anywhere. Where there's a bunch of overlap on the ore prospector and then just yeah. slap her in there. Let's see what happens. Uh, Which one is Tantalum again? Uh, Was that Pyrolucite that we got a little bit from? Pyrolucite, perhaps. Pyrolucite is not an ore in the scanner. Tantalum. Tantalite. Oh, Fair manganese. Enough. It's found in manganese veins. Manganese. Same with the, yeah, the tantalite, the pyrolucite, the spessartine, and grossular are all found in manganese veins. I don't have manganese veins on the scanner either. Well, they might be a little ways out or something. I'm not sure. I'm just looking at the ore spawn indicator. All right, um, gonna be hard to scan for it if it's not in the scanner, because I'm pretty sure the scanner lists things that we don't have nearby, doesn't it? Nope, it only lists things it can see. Ah, balls. Yeah. Um, are you talking about Wild West Dynasty? Because I know that one just came out today, and I've been keeping my eye on that one for for months now. Yep, that one I am I am aware of. I gotta find time to play it, but I am aware of it. It just hit early access today, so I'm I'm perfectly fine letting it sit and cook for a little bit if they have some patching to do. I've got my eye on it. I'm I am fairly in on the uh, the producer. The yeah, the producer. Um, I've got some super secret channels on the producer side so I can get some more info on that. 17% positive reviews right now. Oh dear. I have a feeling that some of that is related to expectations. Um, solid chance that some of that's related to it just being first day early access and not being perfect. But uh, from what I was seeing of the chat for the Wild West Dynasty is that the people who are truly obsessed with Wild West would have accepted no less than a 100% perfect game coming out of that release. So they're probably salty that it is not perfect. But it's early access, and it's the same makers of um, Medieval Dynasty, and they did a fantastic job with that game, especially uh, accepting player feedback and bug fixes and all that stuff. Um, they, they're not the fastest developers in the world, but they're pretty darn good. So I, I'm perfectly fine letting it sit. Ooh, third person combat though. Yeah, that might be tricky. All right, uh, let's go look at manganese. Oh, there's no manganese or, um, manganese. Pyrolucite. Pyrolucite tantalite. Okay. Pyrolucite. Let's start there. Pyrolucite. Four spawns, 20 to 50. On the overworld. Manganese vein. Glossular. Glossular spespertine. 
Where else you learn spasperty? Spasperteen. Glossular. Neither of those things. Well, poop nuggets. Alright, and then, um, py pyrolusite. So pyrolusite is the manganese vein. Alright, I guess I'm going looking for the thing? Let's go north. Alright, so we are looking for Spespertine. Aha! Aha ha ha. Four chunks over, two chunks down. Spasperton. In right here. And then if I were to go to manganese, we don't have. Um pyrolusite is also right there. So we're right here. So right right um here. This building. Spasperteen. This build. Alright. How does this thing work, by the way? <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was looking for, the, the tip. Just the tip. So we also have another one right over here. But let's start... If it, so if I go... Here... It did say that it pulls from three chunks away. Large area, huge quantity of ore. So if I go here, it should be good, right? Yeah. Let's, let's give it a try. I'm going the wrong way, that's why. Alright. One more one more down here. Yeah, here. This is the spot that I wanted to dig. So let's, uh, go down, I guess. Yeah, burb. Okay. Now, the other thing I don't know about this, um, where, where does it need to be? Does it need to be at bedrock, like the fluid one? Or can it be any old damn place? Did the book say? Oh, mine ores from under them in a large radius. Somewhere I remember seeing three chunks, but I could be confusing it with three times more crushed ore. So, eh? Alright. Here then. Right here. I'm just gonna just gonna just cover that hole. It's fine. Right. 
So let's uh, structure. Let's get the crap in my pocket on the bar. Okay, casing, K casing, 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 casing. Uh, I feel like I should probably flatten some of this, so let's get some. Couple. In JEI, it says three chunk. Ah, max working area, three by three chunks. I knew I saw it. Oh, three by three? So not three chunk radius, but three by three chunk. So the area around me is probably not the best place. Because that, that would be this space here. So I probably should scoot over to here and here. Fine. Fine. Uh, so we'll, we'll kill, kill this tantalum. So three by three chunks. And we are going, what, westward by two chunks? One, two. It's past per team. Right here. Right here. Okay, let's try that again. So we will do an output bus, yeah. We'll do two energy hatches, yeah. No, we'll do the energy hatches elsewhere. Input bus. Yeah, okay. So input, input hatch there. We will do you there. Energy, energy. Nope. Alright. Uh, three tall here. How did I end up with one too many of the, uh, the things? Oh, because I did two energy hatches. That's right. That's fine. We are structure formed, needs power, needs stuff. So, power, fluid, uh, we will need item cables or item conduits. Uh, we'll sum. Possibly speed upgrades. Alright, so over here we've got our fluid input hatch and our item output hatch. Item fluid. We also have our power requirement over here, so we're gonna put you here. Ah. Receive fluids. And then we are also going to send items.
Yes. So then another one of these is going to go over um, by the ore processing near the input box, and we're going to dump straight from here to there. I think that I think that will be ideal. Um, so item conduits, you are an extract with speed. And then you are a fluid conduit. Already getting the drilling fluid, perfect. Didn't even have to configure that one. All right, and then energy converter, cables. Nope. Wire cutters. Oh. 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 Fascinating. It pre-crushes as it as it mines it. Interesting. Okay. And it's full. Um, all right, so hmm, it works real fast. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, the big challenge is I need to know where I can dump these things because um, it looks like it's going to get possibly straight items, crushed ore. If it's always going to get crushed ore, and then there's maybe the occasional other item then we can probably account for it in the filter. Um, it also depends on if Pine has set up uh, some filtering in that initial startup box. So we've got, we've got the tantalum thing there. We're not too far away from home. Should be able to see it, there we are. There's the freaking the lighthouse area. So let's take a peek at more processing. Let's take a peek at the input specifically. Uh, so here's the start input, and it's set to dense ore to store here. But I've also been able to throw in ore. Uh, so it's got an extract, and these are all probably filtered. Extract here is just straight up extract. Fascinating. How does this... How does that work? Ah, he probably has filters. Filters, yes. Filter, dense or extract that away. Filter, not dense or that away. So literally anything can come in here. And then from here, um, any ore that is not dense ore and end stone goes there. And then the opposite of that there. Uh, here, crushed ore goes that way. So literally anything can come in here. He's got it set up damn well. Um, so I can just dump the entire contents of the driller into here and it will filter through the chain as necessary. So I think, I think I'll do that. And then if I cause problems, we'll figure it out from there. So let's get another dimensional transceiver yeah and I didn't read that flowchart close enough to know how that all worked and I wasn't paying all of the attention I was only paying some of the attention when he was telling me all of the things so some of that's on me I am aware uh, we need more end skulls. We need more ender resonators. These guys. 
All right, so Ender Resonator. Um, we don't have Nakwada Doped Wafers. We do have Glowstone Doped Wafers, so let's do that. Glowstone, Solarium, Enderhead, Labyrinth Alloy. machine. This is the right machine. Oh, the crunching. The crunching. Processing. Down step. Up. Hey, guess what? What's that? We got a ludicrous voltage. Nice. That's pretty snazzy. That's been an all day thing. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I guess uh, a return. Hey, guess what? What's that? We have a stupid amount of ore coming in. Oh God, really? Yeah. <laughs> Wait for it. I need another capacitor. Oh, you're dumping it through the transceiver? Yup. That's a good idea. Wait, wait, hold. I'm holding. Okay. So this needs to be set to uh, not that. There we go. Okay. I'm admittedly underwhelmed right now. As you should be. It's not doing what it's supposed to do yet. Alright, now one moment. I wanted to hook up the end point before I set up the actual output of the items. Okay. So I'm flying over to the drill right now to turn on the input. Should be coming in any moment. That pre crushes it? It pre crushes it. That's gonna be a problem. Why is that? The, I checked your filters, it should be putting the crushed stuff to the right boxes. Okay. Uh, it goes in the first box, it skips through the filters, and. Okay, alright. Yeah. Okay. You see, you see how fast that's coming through, though? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's currently working on the, the, core, the, the coal deposit coal, that's there. Right. But, you know, it'll, it'll eventually get its way to the tantalum. Alright, alright. It, it has zero the, controls on it. Um, right. Okay. So I was gonna say the one down well, another downside is that it skips over the first maceration step, which gives byproducts usually. Unless that thing macerates and gives those byproducts. 
Uh, it probably does not. I mean, let me, let me check the maceration of coal. Well, it might, because we're getting stone dust. Uh, yeah, yeah, it crushed coal with a percentage of coal and stone dust as the maceration output. So yeah, it's macerating as the first step. Okay, well that is good then. Yeah. Um, and there, there is a silk touch button. Oh, requires an idle machine. Okay, so yeah, I could well, change I, it yeah. to silk touch and just. Yeah, that's. Those. Yeah, it'll be fine. Um, yeah. Chunk mode. What the hell is chunk mode? I don't know, whatever. Uh, let's take a peek at the coal ore. Hmm. Well, that's nice. Where do you, uh, are you still out by it? I am, yeah. It's hard to say, Blade. I'm not seeing any movement. Uh huh. Yeah. A little bit of a streamlined setup. Got the uh, the drilling fluid and the items going through this this side of the transitional the dimensional transceiver, and then we got the power coming on this side. Nice, nice. Yeah. And so uh, this thing is going to grab all the ores and all of the ores in a three chunk, chunk radius. radius. Yep. So whatever's whatever's under here, which appears to be. Gold, garnet, uh, lepidolite, elamed, elamandine, spoldomine, yellow limonite, malachite, etc. There's like 50 different ore types in the spot. Um, so then once this once this runs dry, we can move on to the next one. And it might be worth setting up multiple of these. That is... This is outstanding. It's pretty neat. Well neato. done, sir. Thanks. Thanks. It's very neat. I like it. Um, I kind of want an array of them. But I don't know if our, our ore processor can handle quite that much. Probably not. I imagine the, the holdup right now is going to be the thermal centrifuges. I don't... I don't know how it's doing. I think... I have a suspicion that it's working... Um, like the, uh, God, do you remember the, the Ender Mine, whatever the hell that was? Top down. So one block from the top down. Uh, cause I'm hearing the occasional chunk of an item grabbed. So that means it's not working top down solely. Thanks, Sparkle. I appreciate it. There was a big blank cutout of the coal ore at the top of the grid. I th I think it was already pretty cut out. I think it's thinning for sure. So let's see, 12, 83, 104. 99, 132, 163. When we come back, come back in, 10, 62, 99. So it's definitely working this way. And then it's probably going to come down here and work this way. But you might be right in that it's working top down. Yeah, because we're centered right here. Um, so yeah, it... it there was almost uh, nothing here to begin with. Upgrade another set of our drawer or our drives, <laughs> just oh. in case. Well, just I don't know how much stuff this is going to generate. Lots. Right. So yeah, you're right. It it would start from here to here. So I don't. If there was anything here, it wasn't much, because we're right on the tip of the the coal. So it's working on these here. And in fact, if I go back in. And it does appear to be doing some sort of top-down. 8, 60, 91. So yeah, it's doing stuff. It seems to be going, like, across? 
I don't know how it's doing. It might be doing some sort of weird block by block pattern, like top, top left to right, and then right or left to right and left to right as it scans across this way, and the next layer down starts back at the top. At least in the order it seems to be taking these things. Because then, because we're we're purely getting coal as far as I can tell. So then it's going to go down to the next layer and then pick up the next difficult stuff. No idea the what's next on the list, but you know, what else. Alrighty, Paige, you go, you go get some sleep. Have fun at work tomorrow. But yeah, it's doing the thing, and I like it. Um, really easy to set up. The hardest part is this main machine block. All right, we have 50 untouched 60k drive or 64k drives. Nice. So it should be enough to hold whatever this thing is gonna generate. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. That's a, I mean that's a lot of space. It is a lot of space. Now also, should I do more of the drills? Um. <laughs> Or should we give it a little bit to see how much we're handling this? Yeah, it's starting to back up at the thermal centrifuge point, which is where I thought it would. Okay. So... Oh, I just got some salt. We're starting to get something new. Yeah, so I think if you... I think if we have an array of them, we're going to clog this thing. I guess. We're going to have to wait until we can get our... the multi-block. Yeah. Set up for everything before we really start ramming stuff through. Yeah. But it's gonna be so nice. And then, since it's uh, all powered by the transceivers, we can technically slap it into the nether, into the end, onto the moon. Mm-hmm. Get some of that stuff. And we can, and we can just like, slap Because, like, there's, wherever. for instance, there's... Ilmenite in the end, I'm pretty sure, or titanium, ah, or tungstate, yes, yes. one of the two. Yep. Or both. So that'd be nice. That would be good. And and Blade also recommends that we let it run for a night to make sure that we don't blow anything up. But uh, probably a good call. Yeah, yeah, because the the crate waiting to go into the thermal centrifuge is is backing up. There's 730 <laughs> items in there waiting to go. Oh, is that all? Yeah, it takes three seconds to thermally centrifuge these coal bits, so... Uh, other side of the room. Oh, I was just looking to see what the, the sloshing was, and that's the coal oh. processing. The washers, yeah. Alright, then over here... Yeah, this, is the, this is the choke point right now. The thermal centrifuges. Got it. Okay. The coal is happening. Not that not that coal was a thing we needed. Not, not that we need coal, but now we have coal. We now have plenty of coal. We have three hundred eighty-six thousand coal right now. Oh, and we also have a whole crapload of purified galena over over here. Yeah, that's because the galena goes through this indium processing bit right here, uh, but it needs galena and sphalerite. Oh, interesting. And so we had an imbalance of Galena, and so that's just sitting there waiting. Fascinating. That's how we get Indium. Okay, okay. Not that we've used Indium for anything. Oh, I'm sure it's a thing we'll need at some point. Yeah, probably. The Indium Phosphide, or the Indium Tin Barium Titanium Cuprate Dust. Yeah, that one. Which is the second tier ludicrous voltage superconductor. Uh, also, did yes. you know that there were tiers for those? I did not. So if you look at the indium tin barium cuprate wire. Yeah. You can see that it's the 1x can do 8 amps, the 4x can do 32, the 16x can do 128. 
So each each voltage tier has like a second, like a more advanced wire that Got can do it. more throughput. Got it. So I might have misunderstood that when I was setting up my wire automation. Well, some of those will probably need for uh, like the so for instance those LV or MV um, energy field whatever for the micro miners right. they take the manganese phosphide wire which is the second tier of I think low voltage uh, so some of these might be used for more advanced things later on for like the tier 10 micro miner for instance or whatever right. Well, so when I was looking at the, the superconductor, I was looking at the ones that were easier to make as the one that we should use as our default superconductor, not right. realizing that there were the two different tiers. So, like, Signalum is the other one that's the LUV. Right. And that's only that's max one we'll probably one. end up using because it's much easier to make. Right. But if we need to run more power through a single line for any reason, we can upgrade it to the indium tin barium titanium cuprate. Right. Yeah. We need a better name for that one. Is a, yeah, right. <laughs> ITBTC? No. <laughs> Tier 2 Ludicrous wire? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now. So, so that we are up done. to 23 Ludicrous voltage uh, s circuits, which is neat. Nice. All the. Everything in here is humming away. It's so nice. Very nice indeed. All right, uh, I think it might be time for me to work on the uh, clean room. Right out. So the only thing with the clean room is that it is max 15. Yeah. And we have a building that is 16. Well, that's okay. I just, oh, I see. Yeah. So I could either do internal uh, do uh, 14 by 14 so it can fit inside of the current walls. That'd probably look the best instead of just having one wall be all white. And <laughs> right. I mean, it stick through. Yeah, 14 by 14 by whatever is probably good enough. Okay. Um, or... Or... I could do the full 15 and do some decorative elements on the outside to make it look like it's part of the structure. Do you want to do that? That would also work. I think I wanted to try something decorative. Let's do it. All right. Um, okay, so I'm going to need to read the whole clean room thing because you did that and I had no part in it, so. Yes. Yeah. Um, Plascrete. Filter casing. Clean room. These things. Alright, fair enough. Plascrete. I'm gonna need a shit ton of plascrete. Plascrete. Plastic. Oh. And concrete. Ah, I see. Do we have concrete in the network? Or am I going to have to automate concrete first? Because there's no way in hell I'm making handfuls of buckets of concrete. We do not have concrete in the network. Okay. So, let's start at the very beginning with concrete. Um, and in fact, I might need to set up some automation first just to build the, con the, the clean room. I need to build automation to build the clean room parts and things. So how is concrete made? Clay dust, stone dust, or stone dust, and that's it. Uh, what? Wait, what? Ah, less water required. I'm... This is a really confusing recipe. Twice the materials and half the water for half the concrete. I'm so confused as to why that even exists. When I could just use stone dust. Oh, stone, calcium, gypsum. Okay. What are you manipulating? 
Ah, uh, the machine controller, I see. That's the, yeah. Uh, speed also, yes. And, and clay is probably going to be the easiest to get. I don't think we're going to have calcite and gypsum in big quantities, but let's find out. Nope. Nope. Alright. We have enough calcium and gypsite for, gypsum for like 20-something runs. So, no. Um, and then the other one is marble dust, which I don't think we have. We have marble dust. Well then. That will be the easiest one to do then, uh, because it's just stone dust and marble dust with water to make a decent amount of concrete. <laughs> yeah, you're right, played. You're right. All right, let's see, clay. Yeah, we don't even have enough clay dust, so I would need to dust clay, so having the marble dust is handy. And we have plenty of stone dust, so we need a mixer. So we need a mixer, and then we will need an assembler dedicated to making concrete. Uh, sorry, plascrete. I uh, will probably just do a tier 3, because we're doing tier 3. Eventually. Why is that taking so long? Interesting. Hey, Gita. How you doing? Welcome back, kitty. Yeah, I got my mixer. Um, I don't know exactly where we're going to be putting this just yet. But we'll try to put it somewhere easy. I will need an interface. Should I should I tank the concrete? Let's see if let's see if concrete's worth tanking for future usage. Um, mix to make construction foam, asphalt. And asphalt doesn't appear to be useful for anything. Construction foam is not useful for anything. Assembler to make redstone comparators out of concrete. Sure, sure, why not? Fluid solidifier to light concrete. Okay, so I think I got this, uh, the redstone on the Greg Tech machines working right. Nice. I think we'll see when it hits up. I just put the that controller cover on the front with a level emitter right in its face. I and would hope that that's enough. Yeah, well, I mean, the cover's got some like weird UI. If you shift right click on it, you can see what I mean. Well, <laughs> that's not the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. So, should work. Alright. And then, we'll see once we hit 500 of that ferrite ingot, of which we are at 240. Alright. So, if it turns off, then that'd be perfect. Pull the bar. Then we'll do that everywhere else. And I can see the EBF over here. Cooking away like crazy. All right, one sec. Okay. Nice that we've got multiple EBFs able to share the load. 
Because as much as this system was nice for uh, going on demand, I think having like a line of these dedicated to just cooking whatever comes into them, I think that will help our sanity quite a bit. Uh, the only downside with this setup is if you end up with, you know, hundreds of the same type of ingots uh, clogging up the inputs, and then everything just kind of ends up waiting behind something else that needs to cook. But as long as we're level emitting somewhere, it's fine, or it should be fine. So, yeah, we're probably good. Probably. Maybe. Who knows? Alright, I, I think I actually needed to be back in there, because the ore processing might be a good place to do the concrete. Um, but yeah, concrete, as far as I can tell, is not useful enough to justify storing. I don't think. Because the liquid form of concrete can turn into the solid form of concrete, it can mix into construction foam or asphalt, and it can be used in like the tiniest amount of assembler recipes. This is the Arr. only one. Like concrete itself is useful for nothing, other than making the concrete dust, which is used to make launch pads. Um, so I don't think we need to automate that any further. So yeah, uh, I think we'll I think we'll call it on the concrete. It does not need to be backed up. So we need a mixer feeding straight into the assembler. Uh, we need a fluid interface or an export. Export is probably fine. We need some cables. power. I think we're going to be doing the ADEX and stone though. Okay, uh, so let's go to our processing. And this might not be the best place to do this, but alright, opinion. I need okay. to automate something. And this is the place that has room. Where do you need to automate? That making the plastic creep walls for the for the clean room. <laughs> ah. Uh, what's your opinion on um, then? Uh, can I just slap that here in this general sure. vicinity? Sure. We probably won't. I mean, that probably doesn't need to be a permanent setup, so I can just go anywhere and then. Yeah. Okay. So the one downside, well, I don't actually know if it's a downside to doing it this way. Yeah. It does work. The machine did shut off. Mm hmm But then it drained the storage because right. the, the interface is set to pull it. Right. So. Um, right. So, I mean, yes, ultimately changing up the way the automation works is going to shift the delay from the EBFs to the dust cooking. Right. So it, it's 50-50 it's at that point. It's just shifting the delay from one spot to another. Mm. But having having the EBF set up in a line so that they can all multi-process all of the incoming dusts means that the EBF is no longer as much of a delay. Sure. Right. But I don't know. I don't know. You, you, you think on it. If you hate it, you can change it. Uh, so let's see. Let's see. Mixer can go here. Assembler can go here. Mixer is going to import water. Uh, did... question. See? Did you chunk load where the ore driller is? I did not. I did not remember to do that. Let me go do that. Okay. <laughs> Oh, 
What are we getting now? Crushed ore. Salt. Still crushed ore and salt. Okay. So, chunk load. Chunk loaded. Water's going in. Uh, we also need um, me, me. we need stone dust. Here, let's have this pocket. Stone dust. Marble dust. We need a limited filter. Conduit. Concrete is a no circuit. So we should just be getting power. I mean, power. Power's a thing. Power's always a thing that you need. Is a thing. And yet it's still no work. Marble dust, stone dust. Did I read that right? Also, thanks, midnight. That's the last bit of water I had on me. What am I doing wrong? Stone dust, marble dust. Stone dust, marble dust. Water. Concrete. Why you don't do a thing? Stone dust, marble dust. Water. You don't do a thing. But why though? There's a third dust? Seriously? Did I not see that? Chips on. Balzac. Alright, fine. I don't know why I wasn't seeing it. It's just, it's so grayed out. So, gypsum. Not an answer. Because we don't have gypsum. Fine. Fine. We don't have that much in the way of gypsum. So, clay, I guess, is the answer we have to do. We don't, we don't have it, but we can make it. Poop. Alright, fine. Fine. Take out the marble. Uh, let me... Kill this. Slap at you.
played Dust. Is what is this monstrosity? Down. I don't even know anymore. Okay. I guess I could pulverize the terracotta that we've got. Yeah, let's bug it. Let's pulverize the terracotta that we got. <laughs> what a bitch. <laughs> Keep forgetting that the shift click doesn't do that. Alright, so you get the terracotta. Okay. Alright, so you. Need a couple robot arms just to. You know what? No, no robot arms. Fuck it. I'm go I'm going the the conduit route. Conduit route. Filters. Filter. You take stone dust. And we need to make some clay dust. Marble dust can go back in the network. Alright, so you take clay dust. Got terracotta. We got that. Terracotta. Filter. Terracotta. Uh, filter. Better filter. Take out the marble and put the clay dust there. Okay, okay. Uh, and then you extract. Okay. Auto fluid output enabled. Regular wrench. Into here. Concrete. Okay. Uh, and then we need filter. Alright, so in here for the plascrete, we need the steel frame box and the um, polyethylene sheets. Steel frame box, let's make up more of that for the moment. Sheets. How do you make that more? How, how, do, you, how do you make that more instead of less? Eh, whatever, it's fine. Alright, so then in you frame. Oh, nope, this needs to be a limited item filter, I think. Steel frame box. PE sheets. That'll be fine. Go. There we go. That 
Now you're chonking. Alright, Demos. Have yourself a good night. Thanks for not killing us immediately. I will do a stretch, but I do not have the water. That's, that's chonking away. Um, what I'm probably going to do for now is manually craft up the steel frame boxes as, as they're called for and have this guy extract back into the network. Blast creep back in the network. You have the same shirt on today, Blade? Nice. <laughs> nice. Alright, so Plas creep's cooking and it's gonna use whatever steel frame box we put in the network. That's good for now. I also miss Arkham Knights. I, I do miss that one. Like, I, I, I gave up on Gen Con, but I would happily go back to Arkham Knights. Okay, so that's cooking. Let's see what other parts we need. Uh, in fact, let's go read the the clean room section. That's probably early game. So that's literally it. Clean room, filter casings, plascrete. And then there's also the uh, the windows. Clean room, hollow, fusion casings, yada yada yada. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. Plascrete, so pass through hatches. Um, hulls. Or diodes. Doors. Maintenance hatch. Clean room glass. The wall space must be at least 75% plascrete or clean room glass. That's easy enough. Okay. Well, let's do the clean room box itself.
Got to clean room. That would be interesting if one wall of the building could be fine to leave as is. Um, so I don't know what happened. Okay. Or how or anything. Okay. okay. We have check how much vibrant alloy dust we have in the network. Huh. Curious. Very. Hmm. So hmm. we won't need that for a little while. All right. Well, that's fine. That's fine. But I do have. I did move those three things I said I was going to over into the dust floor. Good, 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 good. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious how you manage that. I, I have no idea. The other stuff down there was level limited, so I have no idea how it even got crafted. Fascinating. Yeah, oh well. So, if we, uh, just as a heads up, when we switch our EBFs over, just take any dust in the network. They might just start cooking. You're, you're gonna get 12,000 uh, extra vibrant. Oh darn. <laughs> that EBF, those EBS will be tied up for a bit. That'll be fine. Yeah. Alright, so let's make up some more steel frames. Let's do some. Also, let's look up clean room glass. That is the same recipe, but glass instead. Okay, good to know. So, I don't know how much I'm going to need of any of these things yet. But, we'll start. And it'll be fine. Probably, maybe. Um, so clean room glass is that uh, diable clean? Sure. Um, clean room glass, clean room block, uh, the plascrete, and then we also need the filter casing. Ooh. Ah. Nope. <laughs> we are not ready for LUV stuff just yet. A regular old filter casing it is. Um, we do need a lot of it. Uh, so let's do that. Item filters. Lots and lots of item filters. Um, I think 128 is a good number to start with. And we'll need a lot of MV motors. Oh, we need steel rotors. Oops. Rotor, steel rotors. Some. Make me some. The rotors are going through extrusion right now. And they're coming out fairly quickly. We also have 6,820 iron plates in the network somehow. Those were all of my testing. All, all of the stress oh, testing that's right. I was doing you would fire up like 2,000 of them. Yeah. Yep, I remember. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's go do some replacement. Okay, so the only thing I haven't figured out yet is exactly how I want this to look. Um, because I was never really happy with this tall pillar anyway, so I'm perfectly happy getting rid of this part. Uh, the thing I don't know is, so let's go to chunk identification mode. So yeah, this is the, this is the chunk space. So this is 15 by 15 right here. So if I cut off this block, this face and build the clean room within that space um, I could I could either 
have it cut off uh, here. And then just have a recessed wall in one space and it could be connected to the, the building here, no problem. Or I could cut off this space, have a recessed wall on both sides and do some interesting uh, pillar work or something to decorate the outside of the space. That's a possibility. Um, either way, I do think I want a little bit of a recessed space. I just don't know where I want it to be focused. Because, like, if clean room were started here and ended here, then both of these walls would be cut off. And I could do some decor of some variety. Um, or I could do a clean room here and end here. And then this would just be an extension of the building. This line would stay as is and then clean room would be here. So I don't know, I don't, I don't know yet. But I think we can get away with doing some stuff first without making that decision. Oh, I need that, I need that, uh, yeah, okay. So then we surface, range, Gila. Gila. Hi, kitty. We need more filters. Uh, so that was roughly half, so we need another 128, if not a little bit more. Yes, the building gadgets have gotten a lot better. Um, Learning how to use them helped, but also they are cooperating better too. Oh, any more steel frame box? That was a weird message. System reported. 86 steel rods available, but could only extract 84. That must have been some sort of weird parallel process that was happening at that exact moment. This building mod is definitely an issue. Um, it's still janky. I can get it to work better if I'm patient with it, but it still has issues. The gadgets are much better than they were before. So we only need a handful more of the filters to finish the top section here. And I, again, I haven't quite figured out exactly how I want to do it. We're going to end up building a little bit over, but it's fine. We have a lot of plascrete, um, so maybe maybe we stop automating that and maybe we start automating some glass. That might be kind of nice. Do we have glass in the network, or am I going to have to liquefy glass too? Here, 
You can stop anytime now. Uh, let's stop. Let's stop you from auto outputting. There you go. So we'll let you finish cooking through the concrete. It'll be fine. We have glass. Where's our nearest fluid thingy? Fluid thingy. Does not have glass. Where the Alright, Blade. Have yourself a good night. Thanks for hanging out. So the um, clean room glass is liquid glass, which is just extractor and glass. So let's do that. Uh, extractor? Extractor. Alright, so now we need liquid glass over here with an extractor. glass you're auto extracting I get that plunger my goodness kitty hi kitty how you doing kitty plunged Right, okay, so I might... <laughs> I know we set all this up because of that one ferrite mixture that needs the oxygen in the EBF and when that set us off on this chain. Sure. Looking at it, that's the only useful one that uses oxygen in, in an EBF. So... Lol. <laughs> Lol. I mean, we need I'm oxygen elsewhere, but still. Yeah, I might... Swap that around and dedicate a solo EBF to that one. Then. Might, might be an idea, yeah. Yeah. And then maybe uh, consolidate some of the helium ones, perhaps, or whatever. Right. So. Alright, so now we're making clean room glass. And that can go filtered into the network. Good, good. Alright, so let's. Uh, Let's swap out some of these things. Um, I don't don't know exactly what I'm doing with myself. This is the short answer to what's going on here. Alright, so let's go over here. Let's kill this thing. Let's kill the wall, because I'm going to need to kill the wall regardless. And the wall can get, can get killed. Uh, let's do it this way. Was weird. Why is it not doing the sky stone? Oh, that's obnoxious. That's real obnoxious. Alright, fine, what else? Okay, so exchangey gadget. We need to place down a plascrete so we can exchange it. 
Uh, exchange a gadget. So Plascrete needs to go here. I do believe. And then I, th I think it needs to go all the way around like, like so. That one might be gone. We'll see. Yeah, and this this is where not knowing what my decision is going to be is going to be a challenge. Because uh, I don't know if I'm going to leave this wall and cut off the clean room on this side or extend the clean room to here and cut off this wall. So let's do some more choppy chopping and see if we can figure out what the answer to that's going to be. Those can go away. I think I got rid of my clean room glass, but it's fine. Uh, of course, glass can go too. Okay, so um, let's, uh, let's figure out what we're doing with the clean room here. So the wall for the clean room is going to be... Actually, let's do floor for the clean room. Okay, floor for clean room. We got floor for clean room. Um, this floor can probably go. Whether or not the entire floor goes, still up for question. Where did we get magical wood from? I'm fairly certain I made it once to make a thing. Oh, okay. I don't remember why, but I, it makes extra, so I don't know. Got it. Why, do you need it, or are you just curious about it? I'm just curious. I just saw it in there, and I had no idea what it was. Yeah, that one. That one's a unique one. Okay, so if I make clean room here... Um, it's not going to look right either way, I think, is the biggest problem. So what if 14 by 15? It'll be a little bit awkward. Because <laughs> 14 is this internal space. Uh, no, 13. 13 by 15. Hold on. So 15 by 15 is the maximum. Um, and then 15 by 15 is... This whole space, counting that wall and that wall up to here. So 
So then this will be a wall. Hello, sniper. How you doing? I wish we had a measuring tape. But we have no measuring tape in this. We only have a uh, packing tape. Measuring tape would be nice. We don't have a ruler either. Hmm. Well, let's just double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So yes, counting that wall, 15 by 15 would be here. So this would have to be a, a wall. And let's, uh, maybe it'd be better if we lay it out. In Plascrete, so we had an idea of what we're, what we're looking at here. Don't fall off buildings. Falling off buildings is bad. Alright, so it looks something like that. That piece would go. And it would go out to here. Let's, let's see what that looks like. Alright, and then uh, you can go for the moment, you can go down. So it looks something like that. We'd have that little hole there. Uh, not not awful. Yeah, I think that'll do. Let's do that. All right, so exchange O gadget. We need exchange O gadget. All right, and then you can go away. go from, let's see, here? Because I'm, oh, nope, that was, that was too far down. Undo. Oh, we can't undo. Oh, well. Uh, exchange of gadget. That might still need to be floor at, at this level. So let's assume that it does. Okay, okay. Uh, and then we switch it to vertical. Like a so. Uh, we need to go this way. Oh no, that needs to be. No, that's that's fine. Okay. So then we exchange you. Okay. And then we go this away. All right. And then that can be moved to be centered on top of the clean room, which is going to be where, Where's my center point? Here and there. That's my center point right there. I'm fairly certain. Yep, 
Yes, that's my center point. So then this whole fan structure can be moved on top of that. Hey, Desert Red, how you doing? Um, I have seen that they updated Mombazu, but I have not got a chance to play it yet. I'm really excited to be able to fiddle with the truck. That looks, that looks exciting. You know, I'm tempted to go back and scoot it in a block. But no, I think we'll be fine here. I think. So let's do build a gadget as well. Build a gadget. Vertical column. Alright, exchange gadget. No, no exchange gadget. So this, this can actually go. At least until I figure out how how I want our uh, floors and ceilings to be. But I do believe that covers it. Let me make sure that the bottom row is taken care of. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, no, I have a lot of catching up to do. I've missed quite a few updates. I missed the dog update. I missed the truck update. Um, I pretty much stopped playing shortly after um, we got the ability to unlock the uh, the grow room under the bathroom. Under the, the secret hatch in the bathroom. So it's pretty much as soon as that update came out, I went in and I played it. I put like a handful of the grow pots down and I just I stopped. Um, and I do that a lot with games that are in development, as I'll, I'll get to a point where I don't feel the urge to play every single update. And eventually have to go back and catch up. Alright, so let's do... Let's just disassemble. I really wish the Skystone would, would cooperate with that. But alas, it does not. Just have one more one more wall to tear down.
tempting to use the destroy gadget for this, but I want the stuff back. That sky stone was obnoxious to make. And I like it as a material. Okay, so that is the frame of the the clean room done. Let's get rid of some of the stuff. All right, uh, clean room glass. We have clean room glass, we have quite a bit of it. Uh, so that is good. Build a gadget. Now, I don't, I don't know what I want the clean room to look like. What I kind of want to do is I kind of want to have a doorway. Here, let's... Let's get some stuff in my pocket here. So we have a doorway here. Oh, is it? Shenan's raiding party of five. Hello, Shenan's and crew. Oops. I need to. Whoops. My bad. Shenan's Kit Kat, hello and welcome. Hell and back raid, what were you doing? What were you going to hell for? Okay, that'll do. So that's that door, and we're going to do another door right below it. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be solid. That'll be fine. Although, at some point, we're going to need some sort of pass-through. And that might need to be floor, that might need to be one of these walls. Probably these walls, because that's where all the stuff's going to be coming from, from down below. Out of Brassel, how you doing? You know, for the hell of it, nice. <laughs> it all started with accidentally robbing a bank. How does one accidentally rob a bank? Just saying. That's just a thought. Oops. Alright, so that can be another door. And then... <laughs> Very carefully. I would hope so. Robbing a bank not carefully is um, usually a good way to get the cops involved real quick. Alright. Ooh. Ooh, you're getting all the materials. Yeah. So how are we how are we fissioning materials? Did you can did you convert our reactor to fission? We've only ever been fissioning. Oh, okay. I thought we were fusioning for some reason. No, fusion is much different. Fusion is what the sun does, or fission is what the yeah fusion is what the sun does. Fission is just breaking shit apart. That's easy. Hmm. All right. I've not yet built the sun. How to Kiba? What's up? Welcome. <laughs> you didn't know it was a vault. Nice. All right. So I got the framework for a clean room. I just need to finish filling in them walls. All right. That is, uh, that is, that is good. No. I BRB one sec. I need okay. to go get my water. So BRB.
Welcome back. That was a sec, yeah. Just had to grab my water from the other room. Mm. All, the, all the people requesting the hydrates, I ran out of water in my other bottle. Okay, so, um, what we can do is we can assume that we are going to be able to run... We're going to be able to run uh, ME network and power and such through the ceiling. So, let me reread. Maintenance hatch, energy hatch. Generators, muffler, hatches are not allowed in clean rooms. Um, plus, 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 crete or clean room glass. Um, we need hulls or diodes. Uh, it says hull, but we don't have hull. Wait, there's no clean room hull. There's a machine hull. So maybe that's what it's referring to? Let me go inspect the clean room that's already in there. Yep, RMS entirely, that's cool too. Clean room. Uh, clean room. So we've got pass through with this thing, an HV machine hull. We have an extreme voltage diode. Um, so that's probably what we need. What does it take to make an HV diode? Oops. EV diode. No? Okay. No? Diode. No, oh, because it's, it's one of the few machines that isn't specifically called EV. It's called extreme voltage diode. That, that explains it. Uh, I don't have any of these things. Let's do two plates. Two cables, machine hull, well, which, uh, which game is that? Um, titanium plates? Are you coming? You coming? Titanium plates? Make them, please? There we go. Extreme voltage diode. Border Zone, janky Russian RPG from 2005. Nice. 20,000, 2005. <laughs> All right, filter kissing can go away. Let's do the dark pressure plate. Maybe not silent. All right, so we got the diodes. Um, we got um, fluid pass-through hatch, item pass-through hatch. So let's do two of each of those. Small steel fluid pipes. Oh, okay. 
Here, get get you crafting. Get you crafting. Get you crafting. And then let me go automate that. Small steel fluid pipes. Small steel fluid pipes. Yep. All right, pass through. Uh, let's do another pass through. I want to do two sets of each of these things, just in case. Alright, that's another pass through. Alrighty, Shenanz, have yourself a good night. Thanks for the raid and thanks for stopping by. Okay, so doors. I'm gonna need twice the number of these uh, pressure plates. something here to step up into it. Let's do quartz stairs. And we can just do more plascrete, that'll be fine. Now we have all of our doorways coming in, uh, and then from here we need to do, I think I need another voltage diode thing. Uh, extreme voltage diode. is through an HV machine hull. Interesting. I don't think it matters if it's an HV machine hull or not, so maybe HV machine hull is fine. So let's do two HV machine hulls for ME network pass-through. Oops. Two machine hulls. We also need the one more extreme voltage diode in here somewhere. You, there you are. You, give me two of these. Give me two of these. Another one, please. Give me one of these. Here is where we'll do some of that. And up here, I think we're going to have to get a little bit more creative. Okay, so uh, we need the machine hull for ME network. And those can go in the topmost spot. Uh, item pass through, voltage pass through, 
Here, you know what? Since I don't know exactly how I want it to set up, we'll put the blocks there for now. Oops. And then we'll we'll figure it out later once we're actually ready to start using the thing. There. So that's the, those are the pass-through hatches. Uh, and then for the clean room interior wall, let's do... Something like this. Oh, inconsistent sizes. That's unfortunate. And so that's that wall. Now this is going to be a little bit trickier. Uh, so let's do... this through all the way this way because this is going to be a potential floor and that means I might want to lower that line a little bit here yeah maybe a glass line would be kind of neat more plascrete and then we have a little bit more clean room glass so a majority of this can be clean room glass so that'd be fine uh, but how do we want it to look no freaking clue um, let's do You feel free to keep going though. Oh, okay. But I gotta, I gotta, I gotta snooze. Okay. Good night. Bye. Bye. So he's he's out. I I probably should also be out relatively soon-ish. Um. I'm I'm. I'm trying to figure out as I go, Midnight. I have no idea what I'm doing. Just kind of winging it. So then if I just... Repeat that on this side, we should be good. And then I just have a little bit more. That little face needs to be filled in. And that should be easy enough to fill in. Uh, so let's just repeat that over here. Hopefully I have enough. sloppy. I'm getting sloppy. And 
might end up needing to make just a little bit more clean room glass. We're just about out. Okay, I have 28 clean room glass left. Uh, I did not remember to finish that bottom section there, so we're gonna need more. Uh, so let's go kick off a little bit more. I think I can kick it off from here. Uh, nope. Steel frame box. Let's do a stack. Hopefully that'll be enough. But then we can uh, finish this off here. We want big window? Yeah, big window would be good. Oh, and we need to finish that. Okay, so I can just fill it up with the glass and then we're done. Uh, clean room glass specifically. At least I hope we're done. If this does not form as a complete structure by the time I'm done here, I'm gonna have to call it a night because I don't wanna I don't wanna keep farting with it. Any more clean room glass please. It did not form into a structure, I don't believe. So let's uh, let's see. Structure incomplete. Can I can I find out why structure not complete? Oh no. Hang on. Uh, I did not do a maintenance hatch, so that might be a thing I missed. LV energy hatch. Maintenance hatch, energy hatch, uh, high voltage diode. I did technically do the EV diode. So maybe that's where its beef was. It's claiming energy hatch, and it's claiming any of the energy hatches, so maybe that'll be fine. Machine hull I've got. Pass through. So let's do a maintenance hatch, because I, I definitely forgot that. I said I was going to bail after this, but I don't want to bail after this. I want to I fix it. So we've got the machine hull, we've got the, the EV diode. It's claiming energy hatch, so maybe we swap out energy hatch. It might be having a problem with the fact that I've got multiple. Because um, I've got the up and the down layer. It might also be just straight up having a beef with the fact that I've got 
a big ass clean room. Maybe 15 by 15 by 15 was not the answer. It claims it in the description here, but maybe not. But we gotta we gotta figure it out. And there's no there's no troubleshooting. It doesn't it doesn't tell you what you missed. It just says invalid structure. Um, so I don't, I don't know for sure. But let's grab the maintenance hatch, and you can go right here. Structure incomplete. So if I click on it, it wants us to do a structure. Um, it's, it really looks like that's an energy hatch, so let's do an energy hatch. Uh, EV energy hatch. That's what it's claiming it wants, so we're doing it. I know, it's just being very picky. But, I mean, supposedly, Plascrete glass, top has to be filter casing with the clean room in the center. Um, input output we've got. Maintenance we've got. I don't recall what that one is. That's the energy hatch. That's the LV energy hatch. This is an HV voltage diode. HV machine hull. So the only challenge that I've got here is whether or not we can switch that up to EV. It's claiming it can take EV or any of the other voltages, so it should be fine. Um, so diode, main attach, fluid pass through, energy hatch. I think the energy hatch might have been the part I was missing. Because I did not have an energy hatch. I forgot that it actually needed something like an energy um, like to power itself. What is using up all this gold foil? I don't know exactly what it's doing. But it's doing things. But I have my energy hatch now. So let's slap a this. Uh, I, I don't actually know. It's fine. Energy hatch, voltage diode, maintenance hatch. Does the maintenance hatch need to be facing on the outside? Very possible. I don't know if it matters, but let's do it. Uh, energy hatch might need to be facing out. Nope, it's still being picky. Oh, you know what? Turns out, you need to finish your windows. <laughs> Let's finish your windows. I swear I had done that, but apparently I did not. Okay, it's not forming still. I can see that. All of my windows are dead. My structure at the top is dead. Let's make sure that this is the right size. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Indeed. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we are within the size limit. I have plascrete around all of the frame. All the edges are the plascrete, which is good. I've got the filter casings all the way up at the top. The only thing I don't know is... Yeah, so that's Plascrete there. Okay, good. I didn't know if the top edge needed to be Plascrete or not. Uh, let's see... EB Diode, HB Energy Hatch, so they can, they can do whatevs. 
Unless it truly needs an HV energy hatch. Might be. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but you never know. Uh, we also have that machine hull. Pretty sure I put the machine hull down. Yep, machine hull's there. Let's uh, swap that around just in case. wish it would tell you what was missing. Let's remove the secondary options up there and see if that is the answer. answer because that leaves one of each of these objects here it didn't say whether or not it could do multiple of each but I have no idea uh, so let's see floor is plascrete any any number of combination of glass or plascrete top center is clean room surrounded by this um, let's see Accepts up to four doors. Ah, that might be a problem because I have these doors here. So let's kill the doors and see if that's it. Uh, in that case, then let's turn you back into glass. That was it. That was it. I had too many damn doors. It's all it's all formed now. Maintenance is fine. It's contaminated. It'll be fine. It'll, it'll decontaminate itself. But we fixed it. We fixed it. Now I want to see if I can put those secondary ones up at the top there. And if it'll take it. Because I would love to have this thing be multiple floors. So this layer in the middle here will be a floor. And then we'll have item and energy pass through top and bottom. So we don't have to worry as much about whether we have the right stuff. And we might do a second machine hull, etc. But let's put these for now. Took it just fine. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's amazing. I'm happy. I'm very happy. That uh, took more effort than I expected, but I'm, I'm done. Uh, we probably could get away with doing regular floors in here, but having plascrete floors would not be a problem. Uh, I'll even put these here as a reminder to self and pine that this can be a floor. And then, and then, yeah. I did the thing. I'm happy I did the thing because I didn't do the clean room before. And I knew nothing about how it was functioning. But now I know. So that was awesome. We did a lot of stuff tonight. It. it we did a lot of stuff tonight. I still need to decorate the front of this because um, it's it's now recessed in. So I would like to decorate um, some 3D elements just to you know put a pillar in the front, put some put some something there. I don't know exactly what yet, but something something to to make that stand out a little bit and look like it's intentional rather than a weird cutout space. So that's decorative. That needs to be done. I need to move this thing to be centered, because I want it to be centered. Um, 
we we've taken the time to replace our entire power conduit system upgrading to signalum because we were running into problems where nothing would function anymore um, we got the drill going I'm actually curious if that's still processing it sounds very much like it's still processing uh, what do we got? what do we got? nothing nothing fascinating but we got the drill up, the, the big ultra drill, and that's neat. Um, we did we did more EBFs downstairs. I missed. Downstairs, we got we got the big line of EBFs done. That took a little bit of effort. Uh, Pine got up to the, the ludicrous voltage circuitry, which is going to be a nice little step up for us once we get to be able to do those in more quantity. Um, I'm not entirely sure what else we did. A good chunk of what we did was the the wiring that took a lot of effort. But we did other stuff, I'm sure. And it was a very productive day. So I'm finally done. Midnight, thanks for hanging out with me. Kiba, Kit Kat, if, you got, if you're still out there, appreciate you coming by with the raid. Brassel, you as well. I don't know who else might be lurking. Desert Rat, perhaps. Kinder. Sniper. I know Blade's already gone. But yeah, we had, we had good times tonight. And I'm going to go attempt to go to bed. Tomorrow, Friday. I don't have any particular plans. It might end up being an Icarus night. If not, I have a couple games in progress that we can do. Or we can figure something else out. But that's it for tonight. Thank y'all for coming. I'll see you next time. Bye.